Hello everyone. I'm Jonathan Bradley and I'm going to be your game master for this session of the role of play. And for this session, we're going to be diving into Neil Gaiman's The Sandman. So um, if you're unfamiliar, The Sandman is a graphic novel series um, written by Neil Gaiman. Um, it is currently actually being turned into, I think, a Netflix adaptation. Um, it is uh, given a lot of credit for being one of the first graphic novels to um, really drive home graphic novels as an art form. For a long time in the world of literature, graphic novels were considered not serious, um, their nature as sort of um, pop works of literature, and um, uh, The Sandman along with a handful of others like The Watchman and um, uh, a few others have done a lot to convince um, people that you know graphic novels can be literature and, and are an art form in and of themselves and they can tell important nuanced detailed stories. And some of the characterization in the Sandman of the main character, Dream or Morpheus, um, is is some very excellent characterization, no matter what the genre is. Uh, he is a strangely immortal creature um, that has always existed and, and to some degree will always exist, and yet um, Gaiman does an expert job of depicting him as a very fallible, mortal person like he, he has the same traits the same pitfalls and and the same reactions to things that any any normal person would have and yet somehow combines this with this f fantastic structure that surrounds the storytelling um, and meshes those things together so that it doesn't seem weird or out of place um, there are a lot of themes that are um, sort of explored throughout the Sandman is a long series this this volume that I have here which you will see is, is quite thick is only the the first volume of two so um, being a graphic novel there's quite a bit to it and but for this particular stream what I'm going to be investigating is the um, themes of storytelling and storytelling as truth there is a scene in the Sandman um, in which dream meets uh, William Shakespeare and William Shakespeare you, you come to find out that through this um, interaction that they have um, dream as the the person the creature the being fiction um, and then by extension what it means to have truth um, and so there's a really great scene in the book in which um, uh, Shakespeare's troop is putting on a Midsummer's Night Dream, but they are doing it for the actual um, elves and fairies that are being depicted within it because those are friends of dreams and they supposedly really exist in this world. Um, and at the end of the play, um, the one of the fairies turns to Dream and, and says, you know, that's not how it happened. Um, that's not the truth. And Dream's response is simply that it will be the truth and that the the truth that we tell in stories is more important than what actually happened that um you know the content of shakespeare's plays we know those stories more than we know the actual histories of the real life people who were involved in some of these situations and um it's it's really supposed to drive home the effect that a good story has on the world and that it is in many ways shape or form a very good story can replace what it means to have truth um, and it in itself becomes the truth that it replaces um, so there's this balancing act there and so uh, in this one shot the characters are going to be going to the world of the dreaming uh, and they're going to be grappling a little bit with um, what is truth what are words the spoken word the stories that are told um, along with exploring a handful of these um, strange places locales uh, characters and um, entities that exist within the, the Sandman's world um, so it should be fun uh, one of the things that um, I've asked the players to do is all make bards because the idea of storytelling being performers is all going to be um, very important to this so I wanted them all to already have a leg up with that and there there's also some sort of custom mechanics that I made for this game there is um, a sort of mini game that they'll play at one point in time that so, um, all of those things I'm, I'm looking forward to and I think should be pretty exciting um, so yes uh, please uh, sit down and enjoy this session of the role of play
All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the role of play. Uh, once again, I am Jonathan Brad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump in and introduce our players for this session. Uh, we will start with Kayla. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kayla McNabb. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. Uh, I am head of instructional content design for the University Libraries at Virginia Tech. Uh, and um, I was on uh, last time we did role of play. So if you tuned in, this may sound familiar, but my role within the libraries um, really overlaps a lot with creation of uh, educational content and working with creatives. Uh, so there's a lot of play kind of inherent in that aspect of my job. Uh, and I really enjoy being able to encourage that uh, in myself and in my colleagues. Um, experience with role playing. I've been role playing for about 10 years now or so, starting with Dungeons and Dragons second edition um, and primarily playing that for quite a while and then moving to 3.5 and then more recently playing fifth edition, um, which is what we'll be using tonight. Um, also dabbled a little bit in some other kind of smaller uh, role playing uh, systems, um, but Fifth edition is very easy for kind of a full-fledged role-playing system. Um, so I'm glad that's what we're using and not second edition where there's a lot of math. Um, and I don't have any real previous experience with this work of literature. Um, I am interested in the story. I know a little bit about the story from kind of the media more broadly. And I'm really excited to kind of see how we explore this this evening. Uh, for my character... Um, she uses she, her pronoun that may come out uh, for her bounty hunter background. Um, she is a gnome uh, and we are all bards. She is a bard of the College of Eloquence uh, and she is the ringmaster of our little circus troupe. Um, she's typically a bit surly at first in her personal life um, and warm slowly to folks. So over the course of our time traveling together, she's come to know this group as friends. Um, she's inquisitive and tries to use words before actions. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from Lee. Um, hi, my name is Lee Walters. I work in Pamplin International Programs, mostly advising students interested in international opportunities, and that includes study abroad and international internships. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and as far as play with my job, I think that in terms of study abroad, education is important, but the experience of going abroad is just as important, and play as in gaining new life experiences and seeing things from a different perspective. I, I really encourage that in my students and think that is an integral part of being in college. <laughs> um, my experience with role playing is pretty small comparatively. I've played for about two years in a couple different campaigns, um, all using fifth edition. So that's really all I know. Um, I've probably read all of Neil Gaiman's books and Sandman is definitely one of my favorite works that he's done. Um, I've been reading the comics since I was in high school and it was probably one of my first introductions into graphic novels as a whole and, and viewing graphic novels as a work of art as opposed to just comics. Um, so I'm playing a character that is also a bard, <laughs> obviously. Um, and my bard is a human named Clown and he is a clown in this circus. Um, he does have a, a, a name, but has not yet revealed it to anyone. Um, probably because of his criminal background, <laughs> uh, he's currently on the run, so hanging out in a circus. Um, my bard is from the College of Whispers, and for the most part, he keeps to himself, um, is friendly with the troop as a whole, but doesn't speak very much. Excellent. Uh, thank you. And next we'll hear from Tucker. Uh, I'm Tucker. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm the token student on this stream. Uh, I'm a uh, play currently in academics, but I do really um, search for it in everything else. Um, like a ton in the kitchen, picking up a ton of different recipes and just trying uh, to see if they work, uh, if they turn out nicely. 
um, and other things, but that primarily. Um, I, I've played D&D for, I think, three years now, not a ton. Um, I always fantasized about it, but never really had the right group to play it with um, before coming to college. Um, so that's been really fun. Um, I can't say that I'm familiar uh, with Sandman at all. I, I trust that uh, through pop culture, I might know some things that I don't know that I know, but that's as much as I have going for me um, with this one. Um, my character is Barden, uh, Barden Nebuk. Uh, he is a mountain dwarf, a strong man in our circus troupe. Uh, he grew up in a different troupe. Um, I just always wanted to be a strong man, looked up to theirs. Um, and he is sort of like a classical teddy bear where like he, or I say teddy bear, like the archetype of a person where, um, perhaps looks intimidating, but has like a really soft inside. Excellent. Thank you. And finally, we will hear from Kira. Hi, uh, my name is Kira Dietz. I use she, her pronouns. I am the assistant director of special collections and university archives. Um, I wouldn't say play explicitly applies to my job, but I consider myself pretty much an introvert at home. Uh, I like as a creative writer and gamer, but RPGs really help me be an extrovert in the aspects of my work that require that. So a lot of instruction and outreach. So it allows me to think creatively, think on my feet uh, and sort of uh, adapt as I need to. Uh, my experience with role play, I played uh, Dungeons and Dragons in high school and college back in the days of AD&D. So I took a very long hiatus and I have been playing for the last five years or so with 5e, which I love so much better, even though I don't want to start a, a rules war here. Uh, I am also a, an occasional honey heist game master, uh, which is a great game. And I hope to start DMing some 5e as well. Uh, I'm really glad to hear I am not the only person who has no experience with this work of literature. I have a vague idea of what it's about, but I am, uh, for better or worse, uh, she uses the pronoun she, her. She is also obviously a bard, uh, but the College of Swords, and uh, she is a Glazia variant tiefling. Uh, she's a gambler musician turned gambler musician and sword expert slash combat storyteller. So in our little circus, she juggles blades. She tells stories about blade masters and illustrates her own work with magic. Uh, she loves an audience. If she doesn't have one of her own, she will provide it through illusions. She loves a good bet and she doesn't like to lose. So her combat strategy tends to be distract and stab. Um, but she also doesn't like to back down or lose. So her exit strategy tends to be distract and run. It's kind of a theme for her. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. So uh, if everyone's ready, then I guess we will go ahead and jump into the adventure. Um, so uh, your group has been traveling together for a long time. You've been performing in towns and cities. You've gained a decent following in some places, but you've made enough money to keep on your adventure and you've all honed your skills along the way. However, lately, something weird has been going on. You go to tell a story, a story that you've told a thousand times, and some of the words just aren't there anymore. You know that something is missing. You remember the words around it, but whatever that word was, it is just gone. Or you go to sing a song and you nor any of your compatriots can remember how it ends. You know you've sang it probably a thousand times. You know there is more, but a word or even a phrase is simply gone. And it isn't just you. As you travel around playing and talking with townspeople, you've come to realize everyone is experiencing the same thing in all languages. Poems, songs, stories, parts of them are missing. And the arts you practice are suffering as your repertoire slowly dwindles, all language being pruned away. Then one night, you pull your cart over to sleep. You make camp, and after each of you fall asleep, you all find yourself staring at the same dream. In the dream, you are all still at the campsite, sitting around a fire that you had snuffed out just before going to sleep. However, now the fire burns bright and tall, and as you stare at it, you see a pair of eyes deep in the flames. They aren't normal eyes, though. Each is pitch black with a bright point of light in the center. You aren't sure how you know, 
but you all know for certain and without a doubt that each of those points of light is a star, a star that is contained in some ancient and eternal being. And a voice speaks to you from the fire, mild but urgent. It says, I must call upon you, Tharsis, and the ancient laws prevent me from intervening directly. Go and restore what has been lost, and I will grant you each a boon. When you all awake in the morning, refreshed, and the dream hanging vivid in your memory, you find lying on a tree stump near the camp a large, weathered, leather-bound book. You open it to the first page, and as you watch, the following words are written on the otherwise blank page, as if by an invisible hand. Quote, and the travelers headed out to the forest of Domini in the west, to the clearing near the great Tallman Falls, where a weirding stone waits. They left on this dangerous journey, for they would restore what had been taken from them, and because they were of the Lord Shaper's ilk. Unquote. The book proceeds to continue writing, sort of narrating the lives of your group. As you read it, you are occasionally able to glean clues or hints on where to go or what to do next. For the next three months, you travel, following the guidance of the book, until you reach the meadow described, which contains a large stone standing upright. It is covered in strange markings and radiating an undefinable magical energy. Following the book's directions, you all go to sleep in the clearing surrounding the stone. You find yourselves passing through a mutable and foggy nothingness. Light radiates as if from everywhere, but nowhere in particular. And as you look around, you find yourselves between a great set of gates. The left gate is made of ivory and the right of horn. What do you do? Obviously, gates are for going through. <laughs> Obviously, gates are for going through. Can we see what's on the other side of the gate? Here's to be more foggy nothingness, but um, you can notice in the distance there seems to be some sort of structure. It's sort of cast in shadow given the, the air around here, but um, it is large enough that you can make it out. Through which gate? Uh, through or both through of each them. Gate. Okay. I, will, I will be clear, there is no fence. There are just two large gates. I'm going to walk around to the other side of the gate. Okay, you walk around, um, you pass to the other side. Y'all watch, um, she does this, and there is a, a moment where things seem to flip, and she's coming around the other side of the gate. Um, you realize you're, you're still- For anything uh, going towards either of the gates? You, you do not see any tracks on the ground. You're not actually sure what you're standing on. There's not- really a solid ground below you as you step you feel your foot hit you know a, a level surface but it is mostly shrouded in this this seeming fog that has uh, no real texture to it are there locks it does not appear to be locked okay uh who has the book uh so you find that now you do not have the book anymore in this place Oh no. I mean, we'll just tell our own story. If we can't go around, we go through. Nithvari walks up to the gates. She is impulsive and doesn't have time to plan. Okay. Which gate <laughs> are you? Can I going push through? them open? You can push them uh, open. The ivory. The ivory. Okay. You go through the ivory gate. You walk through. Mm -hmm. you, you watch as Nithvari walks through the side of the gate, and you can see her on the other side, standing there probably looking back at you impatiently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll walk through the gate. Yeah, that one looks safe at least, or right. not Every immediately dangerous. Everybody or tell we'll me which be gate. The same danger. Everybody tell me which gate you walk through. Ivory uh, gate. Okay. Yes. Ivory gate. Unless they right. change. Yes. Uh, it does not change. Lovely. Um, so everyone who walked through the ivory gate uh, from this point forward, while you are in this place, you will have advantage on deception checks. Yeah. Yeah. What do Head we see on this side? Uh, same thing, uh, but you feel like you can actually travel on this side of the gate now. 
Um, there's still sort of an airy, foggy nothingness where you're standing, but um, you have successfully passed through the gate. Um, and you can still see this potential structure in the distance. So we book it to the structure then. All right. Yeah. So y'all take off. You start Where heading, else? <laughs> start heading in the direction of the structure. Um, as you, you travel for, there's a moment where you realize your sense of time here is very hard to pin down. Um, whether time is passing or not, or if it's passing more quickly or slowly, um, is actually sure how long it's taken, how long you've been walking. At times, it seems like mere seconds um, of walking and others, you're not sure, but it could have been hours, maybe days. Um, and these two contradicting things sort of exist in your head at the same time. Um, but you do walk through the fog and eventually it starts to clear. Um, what you see in this clearing is a very large building. It is obviously a palace of some sort. Um, it seems to be made for someone very important. Um, the first thing you notice is the architecture of this place is impossible. There are overhangs, there are structures um, that can't exist. They can't support themselves. There are structures that seem like optical illusions, like they, they can't, they're not actually physically modelable structures uh, for in a real life scenario. Nevertheless, they exist and you can, you can tell with a pretty good certainty that they do exist um, despite the, the seemingly impossible nature of them. Um, there is a great sort of um, hallway that leads up to this a large set of front doors um, and you immediately notice um, there's there's sort of a, a little bit of a building on your left and your right and they both stretch back to the main structure um, on the left the right and on the main structure above the door there are three um, uh, very large creatures um, for, game, for game purposes they would count as huge one is a griffin one is a wyvern and one is a hippogriff. And as you approach, um, they have obviously noticed you coming probably from a far distance. And um, the closer you get, they sort of hunch at their perches um, and, and lower themselves down closer to the ground um, as you get closer. Did you say they were like statues they're made of stone they are not statues no they, they are, are real they things. are okay. real <laughs> creatures right um, <laughs> just for sake of clarity are we just walking or do we have like a cart with us you no longer have a cart with you you All are right. just walking okay um and as you approach um the the wyvern uh says who goes there who treads in the dreaming say um i'm, I'm barden that's me. These are my friends. Who, who are you? We are the guardians of our maker's home. And who might that be? The Lord Shaper. I, I turn around. I'm like, do, do we know who the Lord Shaper is? All right, we got some rolls over there. Someone rolled in that one. Wait, who's I don't know what he is. <laughs> 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 they are. Got uh, nothing. Got nothing from the Thvari, but uh, doesn't have to do well. with gambling or music or storytelling. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, clown, you got an eighteen, so that is enough to know the Lord Shaper. One, um, you were called. The book called you, referred to your group as the Lord Shaker's Shaper's ilk. Um, the Lord Shaper is a name for a being that supposedly is in charge of dreams and, by extension, the world of stories. Um, so that is sort of where your background knowledge comes from. It's not a, it's not a worship to God or anything. It's not part of any church, but there are stories of the Lord Shaper. Um, okay. So no one panic, but I think this is a dream God or a dream person or an evil dream person. I don't know if we should be here. I thought we should be here because aren't we looking for what's lost? From the star person. 
I mean, but like, I don't really care about that. Mm. It's a little inconvenient, though, the whole like word losing thing. Just yeah, yeah it's but made like, things difficult. You know, I'm mm. I'm sure we'll be fine. Mm. Odds are, without resolving this ourselves, we're done for. Yeah, I mean, we're we're a circus troupe. We're not like heroes. <laughs> I, I say, speak we? for yourself and I do a big flex. <laughs> okay, calm down. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Clown will turn to the griffin and and I'll say, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Griffin, sir, uh, we, we found a magic book and the magic book told us to come here and also that we are the Lord Shaper's ilk. It Was says, that the secret password? If you if you believe yourselves to be the Lord Shaper's ilk, then you must prove it. Uh, and the Griffin says, he says, one of you give me a story of people who never existed in places. Okay, I'm going to turn back to the group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really the story person, so. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna go sit down one of you take care of this um i'm gonna go sit somewhere else <laughs> so that was a story that never happened with people who never existed uh, in a place it. that doesn't exist and it's worth laughing over okay so a completely fictional story that's funny <laughs> I'm going to sort of do a, a look, Nefari. I think this might be your wheelhouse a little bit. She's sort of drumming her fingers along her, her chin, and you see a little bit of flash of fang as she sort of smiles. Uh, and she begins to weave this story, and in typical style, without even realizing it, a dagger sort of appears in her hand, and she gestures with it as she's telling uh, and she begins to tell the story of a race of beings who <laughs> favor daggers as their weapon of choice. Uh, and they believed that this was the greatest weapon. It was the biggest weapon one could wield. And uh, it, it held the greatest amount of power. And they existed in this bubble. And one day they found themselves at the borders of the place in which they lived. And they stepped beyond them. And in doing so, uh, realized that they were, in fact, much smaller than the rest of the world. And these weapons that they wielded held no power, but it's <laughs> it made no attempt to stop them from attacking everyone that they met along the way in an attempt to prove themselves, uh, which often ended in cases of uh, cut shoelaces or uh, <laughs> lost pant legs, uh, but never really succeeded in doing much, except teaching them that perhaps they were not as great as they thought. <laughs> he nods at you, and that story that you just told, it vanishes from your mind. You realize you just told a story, um, but it is gone. You can no longer remember it. Mm -hmm. uh, courage who fought to save that which is important, a story to inspire. A real hero, a real person. Okay. Story. Well, you know, maybe we should just leave, guys. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't really know any other people. Uh, Barden steps up um, and begins talking about his father um, who took him in um, to the circus. Uh, he was a, a strong man in his own right, but uh, before he was a circus um, strong man, he was a warrior in an army um, who inspired many and- uh, Wait, 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 wait. 
Can I, can I interrupt you? Can Clown I, interrupt you? Clown I, I grabs clown you by can. the shoulders. Okay. Okay, this is very sweet what you're doing. Um, he wanted a story to inspire. Yeah. Oh, wait. My Before father was inspiring. Do anything crazy. When Nathvari told the story before and she forgot it, what about the people that heard it? Did we also like no. forget it? No. And this is this is different than the thing that's been happening to you previously. Okay. In that this is this was a whole story. Previously you've been losing words and phrases, parts of things. Um, this seems like maybe you gave a story to someone. Okay. All right, so I continue shaking him by the shoulders. <laughs> Say clown what? Um uh... They want a story about an inspiring person. Yes, yes. My father is undeniably an inspiring man. And I completely believe you. But uh, are you willing to give up that story? Is it gone forever, do you think? I mean, look, I, I'm just a clown, so I don't know. But uh, I'm just saying. It might maybe, be. Maybe give a story of someone you care less about, you know? That doesn't sound very inspiring. I don't think it has to. Does it, Mr. Griffin? Does it have to be inspiring? They just uh, have to be brave, right? I mean, a story of a brave person would assuredly be inspiring. Okay, well, you could. Give, I, I turn back. <laughs> you can give a, a story of a brave person that you don't. Uh, who is a famous elf figure? Naturally, of course, everyone knows that one. Everyone knows that one. But yes. it's it's of just course. so overdone yes. i feel like it's not really inspiring anymore look i'm trying to help you out here <laughs> well maybe you have an inspiring story i do not have an oh, inspiring story what about at george all. washington or one of his friends maybe? all right listen okay <laughs> i i uh i got an f in history class so i don't know the story <laughs> one, one, one of you guys well it um, sounds like maybe there was important here. for you then I mean, I don't care about him, but okay. You know what? Tell tell him about your dad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you think I should tell him about yeah, my dad? Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's fine. I'm still, I, I <laughs> raised my hand. I'm still concerned about it. Okay. About your dad. Um, I mean, do you think the George Washington story would work? I mean, sure. Hero, sure. brave, inspiring. Okay. If you give him that and he doesn't like it, who cares? Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, well, then then I turn back to the griffin um, and start on the tale of um, George Washington, the dragon slayer, <laughs> um, who, as we all know, uh, saved uh, our lands from, from the dragon invasion of yesteryear. Um, unfortunately, he, he did pass away um, shortly thereafter, but... Uh, he inspired many um, uh, to hold their own against the uh, unconfrontable forces, like the he, dragons. Uh, the wyvern nods at you, and you feel that story leave your mind. Uh, and the hippogriff leans down and says, give me a story of your life, of someone who loved you and was loved by you, of something mm -hmm. lost, a story for the melancholy. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well. Does, does anyone have any precious memories they'd like to give up? <laughs> uh, give me the criteria again. Give me a story of your life, of someone who loved you and was loved by you, of something lost, a story for the melancholy. Okay. Nith Nithvari shrugs and says, I'm out on this one. It's always just been me. <laughs> <laughs> so Triniana says, well, I have a story, girl. I was very close to my friend Liliana. And she and I grew up together, and I thought that we would be in a band and travel the world until 
we got mixed up with some people and she stepped in when it should have been me and she is still in prison to this day and I can't bring myself to speak on her behalf to get her out because I don't know what it would mean for me the the hippogriff nods and you feel that story leave your mind um and the the wyvern says you may enter um if you are here to help the lord shaper you should seek out cain who can take you to the chamber of catharsis okay well this has been very fun so um I guess we'll get going. Goodbye. The, the, uh, the great door? doors open up um, for you as though you have been granted passage um, for passing this, this trial. Um, in front of you is a, a long hallway with um, seemingly um, nondescript walls. You can see it's, it's quite a ways down in the distance though. There does appear to be an end of this hallway. What's at the end of the hallway? As you travel down through there, you eventually come to a door. It is a wooden door that has a frosted window. Um, on the other side of the frosted window, you can see what looks to be an abandoned room inside of a house. Um, it, the architecture on the other side of the window looks very different than the space that you're in. Uh, it actually looks like maybe there was a fire there at some point in time, but it was probably quite a long time ago. Is, is the door there, locked? The door is not locked. Okay. Are there any other doors in this hallway? There's not. I, I open the door and gesture, shall we? So as soon as you open the door, mm -hmm. um, there's a moment where what's on the other side of the door, you get, you get a shot, you see it. And then there's like almost a wave that like rushes over you at glance behind you. There is no longer a door behind you. Um, you are in a um, seemingly, from what you can tell, uh, it's a brightly lit room. There is a strange fog. Um, this time, this seems more like traditional fog, but it's hard to tell where it's coming from. You don't seem to be outside. Um, and in the center of the room ahead of you, floating and spinning very gently, uh, is a large mirror that has a gold frame to it uh, and is sort of spinning in place ahead of you. Uh, in the distance on either side of it, you can see there appear to be a couple more doors, although you can't make out the distance and in in that this distance, what's beyond them. Do you guys think the mirror is Kane? I thought Kane was a person. I mean, I don't know. We could ask it. Uh, mirror, are you Kane? So, so do you approach the mirror? I do not approach the mirror. I stay where I <laughs> so am. You stay where you are and you yell at the mirror from a yeah. distance. You receive no yeah. response. Okay, maybe it's not Kane. Um, it's, it's a magically suspended mirror. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah it's okay. floating. There, there's nothing underneath of it. Lovely. It's spinning slightly, too. Can we see ourselves in it from where we stand? From where you stand, no. Uh, Can we you see would have to get closer. Reflected in it. Uh, not really. Not without getting closer and looking into it. There's a lot of fog, and it's sort of spinning, and it has this large uh, gold frame to it, so it makes it sort of difficult to make out any details from this distance. So we have to approach the mirror. So. You could go around the mirror. This is I mean, a very large, there, you don't see walls really, but there doesn't appear to be like a sky overhead, like an outdoor sky. What if it's Kane and he just has really bad hearing? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's possible, but. Um, I hate to lose him then. Wait, did you say it's, it's rimmed in gold? Yep, it has a, has a thick golden frame. How big is this mirror? 
Uh, it is quite large, so it's probably twice the height of a, a human. You can tell that from this distance, um, and is probably a good meter and a half wide. How valuable does it seem? <laughs> Art in dream. We probably can't take this back. I mean, we walked in here. We can probably walk out, but uh, I don't know if we can carry it. Well, Barden, you can probably carry it. I can probably carry it. <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> what if we skip it and grab it on the way out? <laughs> what if we sneak That's up on enough. it from behind? It's spinning. What do you mean behind? Yeah, you just follow the behind. Can't one of you touch it with a hand that's not yours? I mean, I can, but like... Maybe it'll what, stop. But yeah, but what if like something evil comes out and kills us or something? We can run Always away. Always a possibility. There's no okay. door. What are you talking? Oh, I guess there's two there doors. There are two doors. Okay, so what if we get in between the mirror and the two doors? and then do the magic hand. All right, I cast mage hand and try to touch the mirror. Let's check okay. the doors first to make sure these doors aren't locked before right. we touch the mirror. I agree that it's a concern. I slowly <laughs> retract my mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume you're walking around the mirror. Um, giving it a wide berth. Giving it a wide berth. Uh, you, go, you go over to the doors. There are two doors, maybe the door from a prison. Um, the other door uh, is a door with gems embedded in the wood. Uh, the gems form the shape of a rose made of quartz. Does the prison door look, have a lock on it? Uh, they do not have locks. As you, If you try the, the handles of them, they are both free to turn. I assume you are not opening them. Okay, just checking to see if they're locked and then yeah. leaving them be. <laughs> door do we go through? I mean, we could Let's, split up. I'd rather not. Yeah, that's do you awesome. remember Sorry, the door disappearing? Well for any of us. We don't know right. if this dream person's a good person or a bad person. I'm assuming they're a good person. Well, you know what? Never assume. Okay. Never you're assume. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Okay. I mean, we're here to like save the world or whatever, right? So it's probably a good person. Maybe. Or maybe we're all I mean, hallucinating. I don't know. If if I don't get stories awesome. back, I'm done for. What am I going to do? <laughs> uh, well, you can juggle, juggle your, yeah, you your can just juggle. daggers really well. But that's part of the storytelling. <laughs> oh, just, just imagine Wait, do you how think... peaceful the world will be if no one can talk ever again. That'd be pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm gonna hamper my gambling <laughs> i would Can't have to take a mime yeah i don't want to okay. be a mime what what's wrong with uh, mimes i just that's it's not really creepy mime. apparently i uh, okay Nifari's gonna throw up the illusion of a an oversized gold coin in front of the mirror to see if it reflects in the mirror like is the image of the coin there okay so you're gonna get close enough to look in the reflection no, I'm using my <laughs> 30 feet away to throw, throw the image of a coin up in front of the mirror. Then how are you going to see the reflection? Okay, wait. Well, I can wait. still see. If I, if you said it's just foggy, right? Yep. If I were to cast, theoretically, if I were to cast Ooh. Dancing Lights, do you think Ooh. we would be able to see through the fog? Uh, potentially. I mean. Okay. Headlights oh. on a car make it easier to see in the fog. So. That's true. All right. Um. So I'll I'll cast dancing lights. Um. Yeah. Okay. So you cast dancing lights. You watch as the mirror turns and it is at y'all's angle. Um, what you see reflected in it, um, at the center, it it is not y'all. Um, but there is an acorn. And I, I look turning. around to see if I can see an acorn anywhere else. Uh, you do not see an acorn anywhere okay. else. Okay. Hmm. Do you think that's maybe Cain? Maybe it's an acorn? An acorn? That would make sense why he didn't hear you if that is Cain. I don't think he's an acorn. <laughs> <laughs> but it would and make so sense that that's why. You're right. Trapped on the other side? Yeah, I mean, that would also explain why, but... A clown? 
Can you yes. reach through the mirror? Um, okay, I will, but will someone like hold hold on to me so I don't oh, get sucked I'm, I'm, in or something? I can do that. I'm, okay. <laughs> I, I got you. Okay, I mean, this might as well happen, I guess. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll cast Mage Hand to try to touch the mirror. I, I clamped so, on on your shoulders. You're, right? you're touching the mirror. When your finger of your mage hand touches the mirror, the acorn seemingly from like inside of it um, almost ruptures and growing from this in a, in a flash second um, is a large stag that leaps from the mirror into the room and starts galloping off at an extremely fast pace into the seemingly nothingness. Clown, you notice there is a moment when it hits its feet on the ground and it um, starts this run that it looks over at you. I mean, do you feel different? I don't know, but it looked at me and I've never had a deer look at me like that, so that was weird. Maybe it was thanking you for letting it out of that mirror. I mean, if I was an acorn trapped in a mirror, I'd want to be let go. And it wasn't if I was a stag trapped in an acorn, trapped in a mirror, Whew. definitely want to be let out. I mean, that is a definitely. lot. Uh, what if I, I should was be writing Kane, this though? down? This is going to be a good story. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I trust the stag has disappeared into the no longer seals. Yeah, it okay. seems to have vanished. Hmm. What What's going on with the mirror? Is it still just? Spinning. It's day. It's still spinning. Uh, you no longer see an acorn in the center of it, though, as it spins in front of you. Oh, well, mm. now it's a mirror without an acorn. But it's it's <laughs> reflecting everything else normally, though. Yeah. Mm. Ah, okay. Let's not uh, touch it again. Yeah. Mm, I mean, I, I feel like. Because, it, but. Um. Was the puzzle really to just touch the mirror? Wait, aren't we like trying to save the world or something? That, that was like super easy. Well, maybe, maybe it just happens to be here. There just happens to be a mirror with a stag acorn in it. Okay. So y'all yeah. can okay. roll me a history check if you'd like. Okay. Uh, or any other check that you think is uh, would qualify as, I guess if you have Arcana, I'd let you roll that as well. Ooh, yay. Um, I do. Oh. Another Matt one two for in. two. <laughs> two for two. <laughs> oh. Oh, I didn't uh, anybody who's played oh, D&D no. with me, this is classic. <laughs> Arden, uh, you got a 14. Um, you have heard a very old story of a stag that emerge, emerging from an acorn. Um, and in this story, the, the stag is becomes the nemesis for the person who released it. Oh. I, I, I turn to Klan and I say, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think you were cursed by the acorn stag deer. I knew it. I, it had malice in its eyes. But, but it ran away, so maybe it's okay. Maybe no. it's just a story. Now it's just waiting. I mean, One we'll day walk. it's going to come back to me. Then odds are it'll come back and we'll deal with it then. Yeah, and it's That's, a stag. What's the worst that can happen? That it's is how the story goring. goes. Goring. Goring kill me. <laughs> Came back as the person it cursed. Oh, that's fun. Um, <laughs> but that's your reaction. Wait, are, you uh, are, you, are you sharing this information? Not yet, me? no. No, I'm, I say, uh, hey, hey, does anyone have like an identifying piece of something they wouldn't mind clown holding on to? Just for, for no, no reason. Anyone? I mean, do you have something? I have a dagger. A dagger? Wait, wait, wait. wait. Does anyone have like a friendship bracelet or like a scarf or something? Uh, Nifari produces a dragon chess set piece from a pouch and kind of tosses it to you. Okay. Uh, hey, it's clown. from her set that, <laughs> that she has. Maybe hold on to that so that we can maybe identify you and how you're not the stag. What do you, wait, what does that mean? So in I in the story that I heard, the stag comes back as sort of a doppelganger um, of you. Oh. Sorry. Huh. Okay. Well. Maybe so, Navar should know what the piece is, but Clown shouldn't. Well, how would Clown not know what it is? 
if Nithvar just like tucks it into Clown's clothes. Okay, and give me that one back. <laughs> just in case there's like some I'll sort of connection back. between <laughs> you and your new nemesis. What do you mean just a nemesis? Sure. Okay, all right, here, take it back, take it back. What I if we make a cool back. code word or something? Mm, but what if we forget it? That oh, seems wow. to have been the problem lately. That, that really would stink. be a problem if we forgot. Them. Yeah. Okay. We could all hide something <laughs> on cloud, this person, <laughs> and effects. Okay. And then... Wait, what if? Does anyone like, have, like, a marker or, like, a writing utensil? I mean, I have ink and a pen, yes. Okay. Um, what if you write something on my back? Mm-hmm. I'm following. Like, like under my shirt. Mm-hmm. And then... If this evil nemesis, if we get out of here, I'll get a tattooed on me or something. But if our, our nemesis comes back, then you demand that he take off his shirt. Are you okay taking like off your ink, shirt, Clown? Ink is just going to sure. rub right off because this is not like tattoo ink. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It's literally just a pot of ink. <laughs> okay. Um, it would stain, though. It maybe would stain. We can- we could dye your hair. Okay, okay, just don't be evil. Okay. And we'll yeah. be good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. See? Great. Perfect. Perfect solution. Don't be evil. Got it. Great. Now, which which door are we going through? One of them seems much better, personally. Mm, I, yeah, I'm not really interested in going to a prison. Yeah, but maybe that's where Kane's kept. Maybe Kane wasn't the stag and is a prisoner. Mm, I would try the gold door. Okay, let's go through the gold door. Okay. Okay, sure. Well, so the door with the gems embedded in it? <laughs> gem. The okay. Yeah. So you open the gem door as you do this same sort of almost swallowing. The door vanishes and you are in this place. Uh, around you is you realize you are in a garden maze. It's a hedge maze. Um, this garden um, is enormous. You can see that the, the hills and the horizon... Um, it rises up and over them and you get these little peaks as you can see the terrain is is rough and tumble and and in all directions that you can see uh, is this garden maze Um, it's very beautiful it has many flowers um, spread throughout it the other thing that you notice there appears to be no other real living creatures in this maze aside from the the hedge itself aside from a robed figure Uh, who you see, it appears to be the same robed figure. They are in multiple places, however. You see them down a path over here. You see them up on a a little raised area of a path over here. They just appear to be walking, and as they do, they they have a very large book open in their hands, and they are reading it. Um, They are just sort of walking along. Are they reading aloud? No. Okay. Odds are it's not, but I'd love it to be the book that we don't have anymore that would tell us exactly what to do. (laughs) Yeah, what happened to the book? Did someone drop it? Well, we fell asleep around the magic rock and then woke up here. All right, the magic rock. Okay. Every time. So I will say you're curious about whether you really fell asleep around the magic rock. Oh. There was a moment of passing through and whether you were definitely on the border of falling asleep but whether or not you really fell asleep or you just came to this place is still a little unclear as most things are when you are very close to sleep but it does look pretty similar to your book is the mate is that are the hedges of the maze tall enough that we can't see like you can't see just like over to the next area but they're they're probably like ten or twelve feet high. Okay. Well, is the door still behind us, or is it gone again? It's gone. Yeah. Trap. Now we're in a hedge maze. Well, might as well ask for the directions to get out. <laughs> okay. All right. So he's yeah. not anywhere near you right now. Um, so. I will let one of you, you can choose who, roll me a d20, um, and this will be representative of the path that you take. 
Uh, and whoever rolls it, write down your result in addition to telling it to me. So we're just rolling. We're not adding anything to it. No, just rolling D20. I am uh, never lucky out of character since someone else should roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. Let's see what happens. It's a six. Um, so you roll a six. Uh, make sure you make a notation of that because it will it'll definitely leave in the chat. Uh, so you yep. walk down a path um, for a while. You take a couple of turns. Um, you see this figure periodically, but you realize no matter which path you go down, if you're trying to follow them, you get there and, and they're not there. And you ponder for a moment if they're like vanishing, but you don't think that's the case. Seemingly like there is a possibility that they would be there. And when you get there, that possibility has solidified into them not being there. Go ahead and give me another d20 roll, this time someone else. I'll go ahead and do it this time, hypothetically. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I won't do it this time. What does that mean? Okay. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Oh, I can okay. do it. There we are. Hey, look at oh, that. Six. <laughs> another six. Oh. All right, so you you twist and turn down this this pathway. Um, you do eventually end up at a um, crossroads. Down one path, you can see um, a door in grass, um, as if the grass were like growing from the door itself. Um, and on the other side, you can see that there's a woven tapestry hanging on top of the door, like frame, uh, and it is depicting knights on a battlefield. Can we still see the, the guy that was walking around? Yeah, he's sort of, you can still see him over here on these hills and, and over here in these general directions. Um, still walking, still reading. Seemingly, every now and then he'll glance up in your general direction, but he immediately sort of goes back to reading as if he's not really paying you much mind. You guys think hmm, that's Kane? Good audience. <laughs> Maybe. I, I yell out, Kane! Does, does he look up? He, he does not. Oh, probably not. You should try again louder. Oh, Kane! Does does he look that time? He doesn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe maybe he's also mm. deaf or hard of hearing, what like if, the acorn what deer. What if he's the one stealing all the words and he's putting them in that book? So mm. you say that and you realize, um, glancing at him as you walk by, you think he might be blind. This is really suspicious. I think he's blind. <laughs> what is he doing with that book? were his eyes at one point in a fire. <laughs> you don't saying, think so. We all had the same dream. <laughs> it's true. Hmm. It's a worthwhile question. So to clarify this landscape, we are currently, either we can go back into the maze or just to one of these doors. Okay. No. Don't go no? back through the maze. No, hypothetically. I don't think we go back through the maze. I don't think so either, but just making sure those were those were the options. If any of you are interested, you can roll me a history check to try to understand a little bit more about this place. Okay. Um, Give it a shot. It. <laughs> Higher than a one. I know. Look at history, that. History, where are you? There you are. Ooh, Ooh clown, clown is pulling out the 21. Fire. Clown, yeah. you, you heard a story one time. Um, it was, almost came to you from um, just like um, some old um, elders of a, of a small village of a garden that has a, um, it was called the, the Garden of Destiny. And in this place, there is a figure um, who has a book that contains the destiny of all creatures um, and all of time. Um, and he, walking through, um, seems sort of preordained. And um, But this is this garden that seems familiar to you from a story you've been aware of. Hmm. Okay. Um... 
Okay, I take back the thing about him stealing words. It's probably not him. Uh, <laughs> sorry for sorry for assuming. Um, <laughs> blind man. I guess we'll be on our way. Uh, we should go, or we can we can try to get the book. I think it contains the destiny of every living thing. That, that would be. Don't believe in destiny. That sounds valuable. That it does, does sound, sound valuable. Handy. Yes. Mm. Also sounds very dangerous. Yeah, he. I, I mean, I just. Believe in destiny. Yeah. He's like an old blind man. What is he gonna do? I mean, he is walking around reading a book without eyes. Yeah, that, that's in a uh, maze. That's true. Well, you know, I guess we should go. I don't want another curse on me. So. Uh, I'll take another nemesis. One. Like. <laughs> I already have a clown nemesis. <laughs> So. And a stag? Wow. I know. This is getting longer. <laughs> this is my second nemesis. <laughs> um, so this is really a lot for me. Uh, all right. Uh, what what did you say the two doors were? One was a tapestry with a sword fight. The other and, was a grassy one. Yep. Other one's covered in grass. Obvious choice. The grass, right? What? No. <laughs> combat stories. Always the way to go. But also combat stories. Yes, but Barden, you're our strong man, so we'll be fine. I am a strong man. That doesn't mean, like, <laughs> that doesn't mean I want to fight people. I just like lifting things. Yes, but if we have to fight people, we'll be fine. All right, let's go to that one. Okay. Okay. Right. So, someone else, give me a third d20 roll. Um, uh, I'll do it because I'm dragging us into this mess. <laughs> how nice is the tapestry? And how is uh, it attached? <laughs> It is a very nice tapestry. Uh, it just appears to be sort of dangling there from the frame of the door. Okay. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Not just yet. Making a note. <laughs> It'd be important. Uh, all right. So, each of you who rolled and wrote down your rolls, the rolls that you put down are portents, uh, similar to a divination wizard. You have those d twenties, and you can replace them for another roll at any point in time, whether it's your own or an enemy's role. So if you want to give an enemy a certain role, you can do so. Or if you want to change your own role to one of them that you gathered, you may do so. Hmm. Um, you, you open this door uh, and there is a momentary flash. The door goes to sort of, instead of standing there as this, this new scene appears, which at the moment was just sort of darkness, um, Instead of that scene like washing over you and you being ready for it, you actually open your eyes. And as you look around, you realize you are um, in the clearing with the weirding stone. Um, you all sit up from your bed rolls uh, where you have been lying on the ground. Is the book there? Uh, the book is there. Okay. I would like to open up the book to see where, if we are in the book, presently okay you pick up the book um and you open it up and the first thing you notice is you're having trouble reading it the words are sort of shifting a little bit they're not as um solid and when you do start putting words together they don't make a whole lot of sense i turn to Connor and i say i think the blind guy cursed me I can't read this. Okay, give me the book. I, right. You probably can't read anyway. Just let me see it. So you look at the book and you notice the same thing. Uh, it is difficult to read. Oh, no, I can't read either. <laughs> Ugh, okay. You think this is but the clown curse? Before, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I no, can read before. Just, yeah. just give it to me okay. and I'm going okay. to look at it. I pass it off. You look at it. It's the same thing for you. <laughs> You also uh, are having trouble sort of putting these words together. Every now and then you pick up a few. They don't, they're not quite logical in the way they, they seem to be worded. I think my eyes are just still sleepy. Oh, God, can none of us read now? <laughs> not oh, very no. Oh, wait, where's. Oh, no. Nithfari. Nithfari. Okay. Yes, look, yes, 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 yes. Look at this. No. See, I would prefer to live with not knowing whether or not I can read. No, no, no. One of you us has to be able to read, okay? Um, How else are we going to pay our bills? Yeah. 
That doesn't have anything to do with anything. Well, because if we can't read, then who can like read what we owe? And, and then that would be bad. I don't agree with this logic, but I will reluctantly look at the book <laughs> and burst my bubble of ignorance. Uh, the same thing is true for you. You are also unable to read the book right now. You can feel free to lie to them, like though, this. if you'd like. <laughs> I'm going to grab the book again. And even though I can't read, does it? can I tell if there's more written down than what was written before? Uh, yeah, it appears to be writing stuff. It's still writing stuff right now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I think that our dream thing that we just had was real, probably. Wait, did we take anything? Did you grab that tapestry? No. We really should have grabbed something, then we could have... Okay, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it, it's still writing, so I think we're doing a good job, probably. All right. But now we we're back find... here. Yeah, where's Kane? Where is Kane? Okay, let's... But we can just do the whole thing again, right? Like. So, there is... Um... Your, all of your passive perceptions appear to be uh, good enough to notice there appears to be a rustling in the bushes near the edge of the clearing um, as it sounds as though there is a figure coming through the woods towards the clearing. Oh God, it's the deer. I just know it. Okay, I'm I gonna... yell out, Kane. Um, a figure emerges from the edge of the woods. Um, it is a human male uh, he has um, tight-fitting trousers and a, a rather plain shirt on. Uh, he's wearing a pair of black, pitch black goggles and has short white hair. Uh, and as he walks out of the um, woods, he says, uh, no cane here. Sorry, ma'am. I think you may have the wrong person. Uh, and starts approaching y'all. Wait, wait, okay, stay there. Stay back. Don't come. We're heavily uh, armed. So he ignores you uh, and continues walking forward. Um, can I hold up my crossbow? Sure. And warning. Identify um, yourself if you're not Kane. Uh, he, as he walks forward, he takes his goggles and he pulls them off. And you see that where his eyes would be are two mouths um, that are full of razor sharp teeth. Uh, and he says, I'm the Corinthian. Okay, and put the goggles back on. <laughs> Y'all are going to need our own initiative. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, uh, it, why can't I roll? Oh, no. You'll be able to roll from your character sheet after Jonathan starts the combat. Oh, okay. Right. Yep. Uh, Yeah, let me just grab all of you and let me have to add you to the thing here to let you be in the initiative. So I'm going to drop all of you on the <laughs> screen here. Got it. Oh. Mm. All right, so we've got some initiative. Um, excellent. It looks like the Corinthian will go first. Oh, good. <laughs> mm, great. Uh, as he reveals these uh, strange mouth like eyes. Uh, each of you feel a sense of dread uh, pat wash over you. I am going to need a wisdom saving throw from the four of you. All right. 
uh, Triniana and Barden, uh, you both have failed your saves. Uh, and you're going to take uh, five points of psychic damage, uh, and you are now frightened of this creature. <laughs> you can repeat the your saving throw at the end of each of your subsequent turns. Uh, and it is... Uh, Sir? Mm -hmm. um, Backs have disadvantage. Yeah. Um... I would like to cast Dissonant Whispers. Okay. Throw um, it up in the chat. So that's a saving throw. Wisdom save. Mm, failed it. All right. So you whisper these. Um, what do you? What do your Dissonant Whispers sound like? So in the um, so dissonant whispers are discordant melodies mm -hmm. uh, versus vicious mockery. Um, so I like to think it's just a really unpleasant like humming, like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's a moment where he seems taken aback by this. Um, is that the end of your turn? Um, yes, I am standing my ground. Okay. I'm not running away, but obviously I'm not getting any closer. All right. Nithvari, it is your turn. Uh, oh, you can repeat yeah. your saving throw, by the way. Oh, me? Yes. Yeah. Um, your turn. Wisdom is what it was, right? Mm -hmm. Wisdom, saving throw. That's going to be a 12. Oh, it's not good enough. You are still frightened. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Very creepy. Mouths for that. eyes is weird. So. It's not okay. <laughs> yeah. not uh, what are you doing, Nathvari? Uh He's not carrying anything or holding anything, right? He just sort of yes. walked out of the woods. Yeah. Empty-handed and... And is still walking towards you. Fang-eyed? With uh, um, fang-eyed and with the <laughs> utmost confidence. I mean, gotta respect that. Uh so there's there's another little hint of a flash of fang, and she's like, I've got those too. I don't know why you keep them in your eye sockets, but whatever. Uh, and she's going to sort of step in between um, anybody who seems a little a little scared of this guy uh, and pull out both her blades. And, and for approach. Got it. Yep. Uh, clown, it is your turn. How far away from me is he? Uh, at this point, probably like 15 feet. It's not a huge clearing, and he just kept on walking through all of y'all's wait, halt, don't come any closer. <laughs> <laughs> he really doesn't care, huh? All mm -hmm. right. Um, I don't think I can cast anything on him. Uh, the, the dissonant whispers was, it hit him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There was a moment where he sort of paused, and he he sort of closed these weird eyelids over his non-eyes, as if he was stumbling for a moment mentally, okay. and then and then continued his march forward. Great. Um, is it too early to be cast in third level spells? <laughs> it might be. He um, does have. Mouth it eyes. does have mouth eyes, so this does seem like a dire situation. You gotta weigh your spell slots versus, versus mouth eyes. Yeah, mouth eyes, spell slots. More than two mouth eyes, definitely a third level spell slot time. I mean, he also has his regular mouth. <laughs> That's three know. whole mouths. I, I, I do have my nemesis clown that's after me too, though. Is his regular mouth also pointy? Uh, no, those look like uh, normal teeth. Well, that's something. That yeah. I mean, it is one spell slot per eye, essentially, if you go third, per uh, per mouth. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to try to cast Fear in my third level slot. Uh, you cast Fear, uh, and he laughs for a moment. He appears to be completely immune to being afraid. That's what I was super afraid <laughs> of. <laughs> 
Oh, okay, guys, we should probably go. Um, let's see. It is Barden's turn. Uh, I um, while I'm backing away slowly, keeping my eyes on him as little as possible, um, while still in that direction. Uh, could I make a a history to see if I know anything about this figure? Sure. Yeah, great. Um, just tell a, a few stories about dreams they've had, nightmares really, uh, that involved uh, a creature that had mouths for eyes. But that's all you really, really know or remember. Uh, well, backing away more quickly, I say I think we're still dreaming. <laughs> All right. Is that then your turn? Yes. yes. <laughs> so the Cranthian continues charging forward, uh, seemingly does, uninterested. Yeah, it's going to charge. Doesn't, doesn't he get a save? Uh, I do. Oh, get, yeah, you I'm do. sorry. Yeah, you do get a save. That's true. Um, this is going to trigger your ready to action, uh, Nithvari, as he gets within your range. Cool. Uh, 16. Oh, that's your saving throw. 16 on saving throw <laughs> will pass. You are no longer frightened. Rapier attack coming in at a 20. There that is will a hit. bright flash of flourish and a flash of metal as this rapier just slashes out from her left hand. One stabs uh, into him in his chest mm -hmm. um, for three mm. points nice. uh, <laughs> of damage. Um, I want to know if it does damage. That's the important part. Are we uh, it do it do does that? appear to do damage. Um, he... Uh, he seems hurt by that. He doesn't appear to be like bleeding like you might expect, but there is a portion of him that seems to have been injured by this. And he does, it does, there's a moment of pause, but uh, he does sort of power through and continues uh, with this uh, attack that he's about to wage, potentially on you because you just stabbed him. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is, which is fair. You did a stab. Yeah, Fari um, loves a good fight. Right. He reaches out uh, to grab you. Does a 14 hit? It does, does not. Does not hit. Uh, all right. Nope. Uh, he attempts one more time. Uh, how about Ooh, a Yeah, 24? that one hits. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, in lieu of doing damage, uh, he grapples you um, very I... tightly and pulls you close to him. Mm -hmm. uh, he appears to be quite strong, and you realize his eyes are very close to your face. His mouth um, eyes. His must turn. You are still frightened. Yeah. Yeah. But he's closer to me now. Yeah. Um, which is terrible. Um, so let's see. Uh, and he has uh, Nithvari in a grapple. Mm -hmm. It seems like a. A special... This is an unwanted hug. <laughs> yes, a very unwanted hug. Um, I'm gonna try whispering at him again. Okay. Um, this time we're gonna go for second level. Um, so if you could give me that save and throw. Oh, he failed that real hard. Excellent. That's what we like to see. Um, so that's still not points. that's not great on the damage. Ten points of damage, um, and I'm uh, backing away a little bit. You make your save, repeat save. What do we got? An Ooh, 11. eleven. Still not passing. Still afraid. <laughs> it's very upsetting, y'all. It's he quite upsetting. Serious, so. Uh, Nithvari, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try a little creative solution to this problem. Um, I would like to, I think this will work, cast uh, heat metal on the dagger in my right hand mm -hmm. and press it up against his face. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you um, cast heat metal on the dagger uh, and press yep. it up against his face. Uh, go ahead and... Um, he doesn't really seem to try to dodge you from that, so you don't even really need okay. to make an attack roll. You can go ahead and roll the damage, normal damage from heat metal. Uh, in theory, I am also going to take the damage because it says any creature in contact, but I take half damage on fire, so I will 
Okay. Do 14 points of fire damage to him. Uh, you see it sizzling against his skin as you're like pressing it up against his face. face. And uh, face is like eye he's, mouth. he smiles at you and says, I like you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is that the uh, end of your turn? That right? Because yeah. I would have a bonus hand attack with my other hand, so I'm oh. actually gonna try to do some uh, extra. No, stabs. I have to. No, wait a minute. I have to take the attack action. Never mind. Can't do that. Mm. I knew I've never played a bard. Who dis? <laughs> I have a bard based interjection. May I? Sure. Sure. We all have inspir. <laughs> Bardic inspiration. I was wondering when y'all were going to start. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking about that, but I was, I was like, I was just reading up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually planning to use it for something else, but I didn't expect to get grappled. So, <laughs> so yes, just that will reminder. be the end of my turn because I have to take an attack sh- action to get the extra. All right, clown, you are up. I'm pretty sure we're all dreaming, right? So we just have to wake up. Um, side note i did just damage myself and i did not wake up so (laughs) don't try it that way (laughs) that is true that's good because i was about to shoot one of you um (laughs) okay um okay saw me like burn the palm of pommel of my blade into my own hand (laughs) um i am gonna back up <laughs> to get a little further away um, and then I will try to shoot with my crossbow okay Make attack roll attack roll oh wait is there a way to do it from the character sheet uh, yeah if you click the the little um if you hover over the little hooded figure beside the name of the weapon and it turns into a dice, you can click that and it'll throw it over into the chat and you can click on it. Yep. Uh-huh. So over in the, the chat, there's an attack button. There's so many windows. Okay. Uh-huh. What do we got? Oh no. <laughs> 12 does not hit. Uh, you got anything else? I, mean, I don't think I could do anything else. Um, can I just yell at him? Sure. Where I'm are you so yelling? Scared. Uh, <laughs> please leave us alone. <laughs> uh, he he seems to pay you no mind. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, nice try. Maybe so now. Um unafraid of this terrifying monster. I'd like mm-hmm. to run up and smash him in the kneecaps with my warhammer. Nice. Um, make attack roll. Oh, mm, there. Attack. Normal. Mm, a 12 does not hit. <laughs> what a shame. Uh, well, in that case, I'm going to uh, give inspiration to Nithvari and say, you can do it. Don't <laughs> don't get eaten. Please. Uh, you swing with your axe. Uh, he's able to sort of uh, move his leg out of the way at the last minute and you give Nithvari a uh, word of encouragement. Nithvari, you are um, grappled, uh, which means he is going to attempt to bite you. Uh, he has successfully bitten you with this. Uh, I'm going to need you to make me a dexterity saving throw while I roll the damage. Oh, that's a lot of dice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to use my inspiration on that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So 14. 14 is not enough. You try to dodge your face out of the way at the last minute, and you are shocked as uh, he almost like headbutts you, and there is a moment where you did see things, and from your right eye, you are no longer seeing anything. 
the rest of you watch as one of her right eye vanishes down the gullet of one of these um, little eye mouths that he has. Um, you now only have one eye. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and you also take that amount of damage that's yep. listed there. <laughs> that's bad. It's real uh, bad. <laughs> does it look like a classic, like he just took a chunk out of her or is it like a weird magical, he just sucked out her eye? Uh, you definitely think like the little lid reached out a little bit to get it, but otherwise, uh, fairly normal. Yes. Ooh, uh, still concentrating like a... on heat metal. I lost an eye. <laughs> that's still that's, concentrating amazing, that's on an amazing concentration. Check, <laughs> that's so going to be awesome. Be, uh, Triana. Triana. Yeah. I keep wanting to call you Triana, but that's not it. Yeah. No, you can just sit, call me tree if you want. Just call you tree. That's fine. Um, well, I'm still scared. Um, <laughs> I mean, if so, anything, it's gotten a little more scary. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, that is not what eyes are for. <laughs> no. Um, I'll stay checked. Yeah. Not eating and not being eaten. Neither of those are the things that eyes are for. And I don't like it. And so, let's see here. I think but she's still grappled mm -hmm. correct um yeah. is there any way um no because they're in a grapple i can't shatter him without shattering her and i you don't could. want her to be shattered you can't i could he still occupies a, a space his own That's, space yeah okay um then i'm gonna shatter Okay. Because that's a save, not me attacking. Yes. Okay. Because that's what I want is for me to not have to roll that part. Um, the how does the portent work? Is uh, it a he rolls and before I know if it succeeded or failed kind of thing? Yeah. Or is it like before the roll happens at all? Uh, I mean, you wouldn't normally see his roll, so you would before. Okay probably before or otherwise you wouldn't i wouldn't show you what he rolled i mean i could still right. roll the dice so that you somewhere in the back of your mind can wonder if it would have <laughs> made it or not yeah um yeah i'm gonna cast it at third level uh -huh. and uh i'm gonna give him that six okay give him that six for a con save um yes right constitution saving throw okay what is your what is your save dc mm, it's a good question mm -mm. that's on in this character sheet it's just the top of this character sheet i'll just check there save dc is 14 14 okay all so. right your shatter sh shakes his body deeply um and uh you can hear his his bones rumbling um he still seems really unfazed like he's definitely taken damage um and is hurt but it seems to have no real concern for that, um, but you can notice there are there are parts of him that are seemingly not quite as solid, quite as real as before. Uh, that's that's your action. Yeah. yeah. Do anything else? Um, I'm gonna let's see here. I'm gonna give a bardic inspiration to Nithvari also, <laughs> um, because I would like her to still have that one eye. I think that's important for fighting. Um, uh, how do you inspire Nith Nithvari? <laughs> you can't, you're still scared. I, um, I'm not feeling inspired if you're still that scared. Yeah, I am still very scared. Like, you deal uh, with him so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I... Um, I sing a couple of bars of one of the combat songs 
that she um, that she typically performs uh, about someone who was very adept at blind fighting. <laughs> Just in case, like you can still be great. It, you'll be great. Depth pretty, perception pretty is not that important. It's it's yeah. okay. <laughs> All right, it's sure. the floor's turn. <laughs> Uh, bonus action, since I am still concentrating on heat metal, uh, I'm going to push that dagger further into his face okay. and uh, do more All right. uh, fire damage. Yeah, he's smiling at you uh, as you do this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, he takes nine points of fire damage. Uh, Which he, mounts. Uh, and he says, all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, you've seen some things uh, for a very long time. Um. Yeah, he. You see this okay. mark on his face burning away. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I don't really have a choice except to try and break this grapple. <laughs> this okay. is not my stat, so this is not. Uh, I guess I'm probably going to end up using that. That. Uh, well, let's see what happens, and then I'll see if I need that. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> Classic Kira rolls. Uh. Let's see if we're. <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, 11 total. Uh, 11? 11 does not yeah. escape. He has a yeah. very tight grip on you. Um, action. Bonus action. Okay. Um, I didn't take an attack, so I can't do anything else. Yeah. All right. Clown, it is your turn. I don't like this. Um... <laughs> you don't like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is hard to watch. <laughs> um, can... can... Can I do a history check to see if I can figure anything else about him? Uh, sure. Oh, mm. I, I don't know anything, apparently. No, not with a six. <laughs> He's got a spooky, spooky mouths on his face. Yep. Um, like, I learned those mouths are spooky. <laughs> and they apparently eat us. <laughs> I learned that they eat eyes, so that, that I mean that's important information. This was um, a very recent history that I learned. Yeah. <laughs> and I only have two of them. I'm gonna be out a lot of my professions if no. I lose the other. Okay. Um I guess I'll try to shoot him again with my crossbow. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Close. Right now. Mm, a 10 is not going to hit. Um, um, oh, okay. Uh, can I also tell him that I'm also going to yell, uh, we're, we're here for the Lord Shaper. Um, so you say you're here for the Lord Shaper. Um, you notice there's a moment of hesitation at that. Um, it doesn't last very long till he continues his like grappling, but he doesn't really seem to like hearing that. Um, <laughs> but yeah. All right, Barden, it is your turn. Um, uh, I think I might just take another whack at his knees. Frankly, okay. um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> y'all rolling real bad. <laughs> he, he like almost stopped an 18. It was like, no, it's my turn. Are you gonna do anything else? <laughs> I don't think so. No, okay. All right, we are back around to the Corinthians' turn, uh, and he is—he's going to make another bite. He—he he tells you. Sure, he is. <laughs> uh, what was it? What save? Dexterity. Uh, oh, he. Uh, well, you got to make an attack roll first. Eighteen. Oh, okay. Yep. Does that hit you? Uh, okay. eighteen hits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Make a dexterity saving throw. Mm. Oh, it probably. Does. Oh, I'm out. It doesn't matter. Oh, you just drop. Uh, yeah, I've only got yeah, I, I'm out with I've only got seven hit points. We're all bards. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and I rolled garbage. But yeah, I'm out. <laughs> okay. You fall to the ground, uh, and he, he hunches over your body. Um 
uh, and looks up at the rest of you, um, seemingly uh, sort of proud of himself. And he looks down at you, Navar, on the ground. He says, I'll come back for the other one in a moment. I want to deal with my new friends. Uh, and he, he looks to the rest of you as he says that. Um, it is your turn, uh, uh, Tree. Trini just tree is fine. We're gonna call tree, you tree. Yep, tree. Tree is fine. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, that could have gone better. Um. Okay. So I did my portent thing. Um. Also, don't forget about those. <laughs> uh, people. So let's do another shatter at second level this time. Uh -huh. um, and hope he doesn't make his save. Let me just put it over here. Uh, he did. Uh, okay. Normal. And he takes half damage, which is just six waste of a second level spell slot all right uh he definitely appears to be bloodied not in a traditional sense of being bloodied but uh in that part of his body is is fading away um are you doing anything else i am um let's see here an inspiration um why can't I click on one? Um, Bardic Inspiration die. And then I'm going to try my saving throw again. Okay. <laughs> hey, 14? you made it. You're not scared. Oh, anymore. gosh. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. Nathvari, it is your turn. Uh, you're going to need to make a death saving throw. Yep. It's not great. Uh, clown, it is your turn. Uh, clown contemplates just leaving. Okay. Um, well. He wasn't affected by fear. He's immune to fear. Um, I'm gonna try to cast hideous laughter on him. Cautious hideous laughter. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, so you gotta make a saving throw, Sam. Yeah, uh, it's a wisdom saving throw. Okay. What's the DC? Uh, my spell DC is 13. 13? Yeah. All right. Uh, he does not make it. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have done this earlier. <laughs> um, yeah. So he'll fall prone and... Uh, he's laughing on the ground beside Nithvari, uh, looking over at her periodically. Uh, uh, like they're just old friends enjoying a joke, except one of them is on the brink of dying. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Bardic inspiration. <laughs> Can that help on death saves? Can that be applied uh, to death saves? I'm willing to let it. I don't remember. I, can I inspire there, but... you to not die? <laughs> um, okay, yeah. I'll uh I'll give it. All right. Grant your bardic inspiration to Nithvari. What <laughs> please do you say don't to die? <laughs> you hear please don't die in your ear <laughs> as your as your eye socket sort of bleeds a little bit and your <laughs> mind is like in chaos. Uh let's see, it's Barden's turn. It is. Uh Barden uh, is a little torn. Um, I think I 
think I'm just going to go for the Warhammer again. Okay. Now that he's on the ground. Yep, you have advantage. Lovely. Oh, no. There. Advantage. <laughs> Double fours. Um, lovely. Uh, I would like to then uh, get away a little bit quickly. Um, okay. Because apparently I am physically incapable of hitting him. You're going to move away? Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything with your bonus action? No. No? No. Uh, all right. Uh, he makes a save against the hideous laughter at the end of his turn, right? Uh, yeah. All right. Another wisdom save. Mm. Mm. He's made it this time. <laughs> uh, so that's the end of the turn, though. So it will move on to tree. Tree, what you doing? Well, um, if he's just now bloodied, that's a concern. But there's only so much I can do. So I'm going to dissonantly whisper at him again mm -hmm. uh, at first level. Um, so that's a save on his part. Oh, man. Okay, so Why is that's... he so good at this? <laughs> Just very, very good. Um, so that is half on a success. Half on a success. It doesn't have to move away. Okay. He has made a save. Um, okay. Uh, Nithvari, you uh, are down still. You got to make your death save, but you do have inspiration. Uh, someone's yes. trying to keep you alive. Try to keep me alive. Let's see if I you do. Need also, it or if have I your hold it for later. Portent. Oh, you made it. Yeah, I'm gonna hold all those things for later. <laughs> uh, I'm good. Clown, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I will try to hit him with my crossbow again. Okay. Do I have an inspiration? Did someone give me an inspiration? Yes. yes. I did. Um, well, let me let me roll this. Wait, do I have to decide to use it before or after my attack? No, you can okay. before it before the outcome is told to you. Gotcha. Ooh. Nineteen. Was that hit? <laughs> My, are you going to use your thing? Oh, no. <laughs> 19 is going to hit. Yeah, or yeah, we're going to die. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm not going to use it, and I'm going to hope that a 19 hits. 19 hits. <laughs> yes, okay, great. Aim for the mouth eyes. Aim for the mouth eyes. <laughs> okay, um, and then I also want to use... I have a thing. I have a thing I can use. Let me find it. Um, I have Psychic Blades, which I can expend one of my inspirations to do an extra 3d6 Psychic Damage. Ooh. So should I do that all together? Or you I guess I'll... Them. Yeah, you roll them over. Okay. Okay, so I'll do this one first. Damage. Ooh, so damage. there's crossbow damage, and then... Uh, which one's a six? That's a six. One, two, no, that's not a six. The square. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Ooh, 12 points, too. Uh, so you shoot this crossbow and these psychic knives stab mm -hmm. into him. Um, uh, more and more of his form is vanishing. Um, you can sort of see it falling apart, the structure of it alone is is seemingly having trouble holding together. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Um, shoot, I think I only have two bardic inspirations, don't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I can do anything. Wait, um, how, he's still standing right 
Next. Yeah. Okay. To Nesmari. So I guess I shouldn't go towards her. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> Well, he fell on the ground, and actually, he's laying on the ground next to her. Oh, is he, was, he? He's prone. Yeah. Well, it was at the end of his turn that he overcame the hideous laughter, so he hasn't had time to stand up. Got you, got you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna r run up and try to. Can I grab her and like drag her away? Can I do that while she's trying to do her death saves? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can move people while they're trying to do their death saves. Okay. Um, you could run up and grab her. It usually is an action to like move a, a corpse or something like oh, not, <laughs> a maybe a maybe corpse. Excuse <laughs> me, I head. am not dead yet. <laughs> a maybe corpse. Okay. Um, do you still have your bonus action? Oh, I might not because I, I think my um my psychic blades might have counted as a bonus action. I don't know if that counts as a bonus action. Uh, just for the sake of time, we'll say it doesn't. I'll let you drag her like five feet okay. off of your bonus action. Thank you. Um, <laughs> away. Uh, if you would like. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Barton, it is your turn. Yes, uh, so he's still right there, which is really inconvenient. Um, I he's thought still he prone now. He is, to, he is still prone. Okay, so if he's still prone, then I guess I'm going to give the hammer thing one more shot. <laughs> Um, because I don't want to instant kill our friends. Um, and critical oh, hit. Registry. Okay. But yes, 22 definitely that hits. Would be cool. You did! Oh! Look at that. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Bye, 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 bye. Uh, so then there's this, and then damage, and there's a critical, critical hit button. Hit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yay, critical hit! <laughs> <laughs> uh you you smash into him with your hammer uh mm -hmm. as he's he's lying on the ground and he lets out a heavy huff and you watch as as part of his uh stomach uh sort of falls away um and he looks up at you and and seems very angry at that there um since he is still prone i do want to back away um because i don't like enemies personally in my bubble <laughs> Okay, so you back away. Mm -hmm. um, I think he can still do an attack of opportunities just with disadvantage because he's on the ground. Good. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll give it a roll. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow. Wonderful. That one. It's great. Complete failure. Um, all right. Uh, he stands up um, and is going to chase after you, having hit him with the hammer. Uh, he does not appear happy about that. Um, so he's going to try to grapple you. <laughs> uh, he's missed. Um, he will attempt it one more time because he has multi-attack. Uh, we will see if he does better. Oh, he does do better. So he grabs you, and in lieu of doing any damage, he grabs you into this grapple and starts to pull you closer. And he says, I think I'll have your eyes next. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I pass. I would, would not prefer that. Tree, it is your turn. Great. So I remembered um, that I have Healing Word. So I wondered if uh, you were going to remember. <laughs> you're I, going, uh... I had forgotten, but I do have it. And so that's what I'm going to do for um, this Vari. Um, and then she will be able to have a turn after me, which is convenient. So th you get three points of healing. Four. Um, four points of healing. Um, so not a lot, but some. And then I will, I don't need to roll damage because it means you don't take any damage. Bummer. Right, no. right. Yep. Yeah. Do anything else? Um. Mm, I'm going to put a little distance between me and, uh, and him. Mm -hmm. um, yep. That's it. All right. Nithvari, it is your turn. Uh, you have awoken. <laughs> Yay. I have awoken. Uh, I am going to stand up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, he's moving away from me, correct? Yeah, he he went after Barden. 
Cool. Then I'm going to throw a couple of daggers at his back. <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, and hopefully land one of them because then I can <clears throat> throw a little spice on it. 21 will mm. hit. Okay. Uh, I am going to use. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Well, I'll roll the damage and then I'm going to use another thing. So. Uh, it's five points of piercing damage, and then I'm going to use uh, defensive flourish, which means I get to add a D8 to that and boost my armor class next round mm. or for the rest of this turn. Ooh. So an additional seven points of piercing damage. Ooh. My armor class is temporarily a 22, Ooh. and I get to throw another dagger because I took the attack action. <laughs> Ooh. Yay, fighter bards. <laughs> Oh, 24 will definitely hit. Now you're rolling. I'm, I'm you're angry rolling and riled up now. <laughs> he did try to kill you really hard. Mm -hmm, real hard. He does. He did still eat one of your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's going to be a story. As long as that's I don't. It's going to be a story. <laughs> as long as you don't die. Yeah. Uh, so that was five more points of piercing damage. And that would be standing up. Uh, and anytime I take an attack action, my walking speed increases by 10, so I'm going to back up uh, 25 feet. Okay. So you, you back up 25 feet, you notice that uh, with these two daggers, there is actually a large sort of gaping portion of his torso that is completely missing. Uh, and his he seems a little bit more... Um, Having like, like he's having trouble maintaining this form, this grip. Um, he looks like he's in really rough shape. And uh, uh, Nithfari yells, uh, yes, I have seen a lot, and I don't like you. Um, I think I will try to cast another hideous laughter on him to okay. get him off of Barton. All right. Um, so he has to do a wisdom saving throw. Um, wisdom 13. Saving. 13 is my DC. Wisdom saving throw coming up. Wait, 13 or 14? Uh, he does not make it. Okay, great. Um, so he will be prone again. <laughs> so he, he lets you go laughing uh, seemingly at his own, his own comments about getting your eyes and how all this <laughs> is going. Uh, seems to be enjoying himself very much. Fair enough. Uh, do anything else, Clown? Um, I will can I help someone up as a bonus action? Is that allowed? Um, who are you helping up? Uh, everybody's standing. Or, oh, is Barton still standing? Yeah, I thought he got grappled to the ground. Okay, never mind. Um, the, the grappling still stands. They're just okay. you can't move away. Gotcha. Um, then I will also back up as far as I can. <laughs> All right. Everybody backing away from Barton. <laughs> Corinthian is lying on the ground laughing next to you. Great. Well, I'm going to go for the hammer again because it worked fairly well last time. You got uh, advantage? Yes. Mm. Mm, a 12 does not hit. Uh, that so does you, hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you make this attack, and he just rolls over naturally, laughing at the last minute, and uh, mm -hmm. you hit the ground uh, beside him. Um, as I said previously, I don't like enemies in my bubble, so I'm going to once again back away. Okay, so you're backing away 30 feet? Mm -hmm. 25. 25. 24. All right. Uh, so it is his turn. At the end of his turn, he'll make another wisdom save to see if he can fight this off. Um does not make it again. Um, so it is your turn, Tree. All right. Um, is he really under the spell, or does he just faking it to get you to come close? Oh, that's geez. fair. Um, no, don't go closer. Don't definitely. <laughs> that's what Navari's yelling. Don't don't go closer. <sighs> yeah. Um. How bad does he look? He looks pretty bad. Pretty bad at this point. Yeah, there's whole parts of him that just don't seem to exist anymore. Okay. Let's go with... I'm 
just going to do it. I'm going to go with Shatter at second level. And see if we can end this portion of this nightmare. <laughs> um, oh, no! Oh. It takes it's, very const it's very constitutive. Can I use my port? port no, before. Before, never mind. Um, I mean, I rolled that pretty quickly. If you want to use it, you can. I mean, I sort of, I would like to use it, yes. Okay. <laughs> if that's, yes. All right. So you have used... And that's a six. Uh, and caused him to fail. So <laughs> barely hanging on. The only thing that seems to be left is most of his like upper torso, a leg, and his creepy face with his chomping eyes. Um, but there is not much left. Is that the end of your turn, Tree? It it is. All right, Nithvari. Uh, Nithvari also going to cast Dissonant Whispers because that sounds like fun. Mm, casting some Dissonant uh, Whispers, huh? Casting some Nithvari's, uh, well, I'll let him roll. Let's see. But... Natural 20. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Where he's like, uh, you whatever you say bad. in your, your whispers to him. Uh, it's the sound of like metal grating on metal, like sharpening blades. Oh, he likes that. It's not even a... That's why it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Well, doesn't it's it supposed whisper... to be like nails on a chalkboard style, but... He's like, I love this song. He's like, mm, <laughs> yeah. that's my jam. That's my jam. Nails on chalkboard. He would still take half. Oh, I still take half. Okay, roll damage. He still takes half? Okay. Yeah. Roll it's, a, it's a first level yeah. spell. Beautiful beam. Uh That is actually still, that's enough to kill him. So you, you whisper... <laughs> Uh, he looks at you and smiles for a moment and, and says, uh, he, you hear his voice uh, as he looks at you specifically in the far and he says, someday I'll, I'll be in your dreams for your eye, your other one, uh, as his body vanishes into a little pile of dust. Um, yes, and so the combat is over. Yay. And we will, we will take a break there because um, I think we are, we are at break time. So Yeah. Um, Nithvari grabs her daggers and then sinks to the ground. <laughs> Ow. Ow. That hurt. Good work. Not losing both eyes or everybody getting killed. We did it. Yay, Yay bar team. <laughs> uh, so we will be back in 10. All right. There's something about actually like touching the pages and turning them over and like immersing yourself in the history that way that's really powerful. And I wanted them to have an opportunity to experience that, especially because so many of them are not history majors. This exhibit- Consumer culture and that conformity where you had the Cold War still going on, but that was, the really push was to go to suburbia, the middle class and some things like that. But then you change into the civil rights movement and how that just, changed everything and how it kind of shaped the decade and some of the movements that uh, went on for the rest of that uh, decade. Students went into special collections and looked through the historic copies of the old student newspaper, the Virginia Tech, um, picked out things that were interesting to them, and then showcased those in this display. And they cover a range of themes from social life to campus politics to national politics and so often the intersection between the three. I did a focus on the football rivalry between VMI and Virginia Tech. I focused on an article talking about how they were going to meet on Thanksgiving and have this big football rivalry game. And I thought that that personified the Cold War. So you can go through life and not really understand things that are going on, but when you can get a full grasp of something that's going on, you can think about it better, you can talk to people about it and just have a better knowledge and um, be able to you know, share that with people. Hey, do you want to try out recording 360 videos? We've got equipment for that in Media Design Studio A at Virginia Tech. If you're new to 360 recording, try out a GoPro Fusion. This camera features two fisheye lenses, built-in stabilization, and a waterproof exterior for filming in a number of conditions. The Fusion can take stills, standard speed video, or even time-lapse, and there's a number of settings that you can adjust to create different effects. 
We lend the GoPro Fusion with a protective case to keep the camera safe between shots. We also include a cable and an SD adapter so you can get the footage onto your computer for stitching and rendering. Lending is available to all Virginia Tech faculty, staff, and students. So visit bookings.lib.vt.edu today to make a reservation. For anyone who has questions, we're happy to help through email at mediastudio.vt.edu. Thank you. I'm Amanda McDonald. I am the Undergraduate Research Services Librarian here at Newman Library. And in that role, I work as students and faculty with research support. So one of the things that I do is I coordinate a series called the Advanced Research Skills Series, which is a six module online workshop series to prepare students for undergraduate research. So thinking about how to design a research poster or how to write a proposal for a conference is really the focus of that workshop series. I also work in that same role as helping to support the university's undergraduate research excellence program, which is a program that was designed to provide an avenue for students to start thinking about and tracking their experiences in undergraduate research and for the university really to celebrate their successes and to kind of recognize the work that they've done. In my spare time, I love Nintendo. I have been a lifelong Mario fan, so from the original NES to Game Boys to the new Nintendo Switch, I have them all, I play them all, and I am not ashamed about it in any way. The university libraries at Virginia Tech manage information for the entire university in support of research and instruction. So a successful 21st century library needs to be able to manage all kinds of content, not just books and journals. So we've been trying to build up our 3D imaging operations for the last two years or so. The next steps are to have a better sense of what the educational outcomes are in working with 3D images. Digital imaging is vital for the university libraries. It provides a way for the public to access all of these collections of interesting materials and insects and documents that wouldn't otherwise be available. And making them accessible to the general public is a really big part of our mission here. We are currently scanning a small collection for the entomology department, and we hope to continue going through their collection so there's lots of things about how the insects are shaped that you're able to see in much greater detail through these 3D models than you would by looking at a specimen in a pin in a box. And we are completely open to gathering all of the objects that are hidden away in text collections and finding ways to make them accessible to the public. Looking forward, we're hoping to expand the collections and expand access to the collections, but also expand outreach. So we want to work with Hokie Bug Fest and Virginia Tech Science Festival this fall, and also work with area public schools and, and making sure that these get into the classroom and, and then also be able to see, you know, what do teachers get out of it? What do students get out of it? able to work with these materials and so I need to know what I have, I need to know any problems with my collection, I need to know what I don't have, I need to be able to make sure we have an accurate uh, count of that and then make this available to everyone else. And if our catalog doesn't show everything we have, then that's an issue because people won't know it's there. When I talk about who we are in this space, it is the work that is being done from Virginia Tech and Virginia State University uh, to form Virginia Cooperative Extension. So it's not just agriculture. This is us living our lives. This is looking at window treatments to be able to work with what you have in that space. It's talking about 4-H to be able to grow a garden. It's to be able to look at the economics of a situation. Or that affected our agricultural production. And you can kind of see that without even knowing the years, you can just look at the numbers and you can tell something was going on in the country during those times, which I find very interesting. Sometimes there are folk in those rural areas that don't see that their contributions are valued. And uh, this shows that we spend quite a bit of resources to make sure that this is here and uh, valued. This is our history and our legacy, and it allows us to be able to build a better future.
The University Libraries at Virginia Tech, we have been checking out equipment for some time now and we're always trying to think of what's something else we can check out that students would be interested in that maybe they just don't have access to. We've always felt like our job at the university is to help students get the education they need for jobs that maybe don't exist yet. And so what's next? And so drones is just a huge part of that. So we just thought, how can we get drones out there? And the best way to do it was to partner with the drone park. The partnership between the drone park and the library, we did our homework and we looked at the regulatory environment and we looked at what the FAA will allow for that. And so we're like, we're good at lending. And they're like, and we have the place where you can fly it. And so it just kind of, it just kind of worked, just kind of fit. Someone just had to put it together. We just realized what a fantastic opportunity this is, not only for individuals in the university, but just for the university as a whole, if you just look at it economically. We have over 30 different organizations and labs that use unmanned aircraft here on campus. If every one of those labs had to go out and buy some of these aircraft, tremendous cost to the university. We have over six different types of drones that, we're, um, that we can fly. I've been able to see history kind of being made. It's law changing and I think it's the center, it's kind of the intersection of innovation. It is a game changer. Um, completely changes the way that students and faculty and staff can go about their projects. The drones are not at the Media Design Studio, the drones are here at the drone park. The way you can see what they have and the way you check them out is you actually go to the Media Design Studio's website and use Connect2 and check it out and then it says on there, go get it at the drone park. We're making history here, and it's really amazing to be a part of that. Tom? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to assume I'm back on. OK. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Um, uh, we are, we are right in the midst of this adventure in Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, one of Nithbardi's, Nithbardi's uh, eyes. Um, so she, is, she now only has one eye. Um, as you guys, so you, you, as you sort of land this final blow, his body fades to dust and he says these final words to Nithbari. Um, the, you take a few moments to catch your breath. Um, and as you look around the clearing, you realize while the part that's close to the clearing is, is seemingly identical to the actual clearing that you were in, as you look a little deeper into the woods, you find that there are actually doors built into trees. Um, there are a couple on opposite sides of the clearing. Uh, one of them is um, a strange looking sleek metal door. It is completely smooth metal and it has an indentation. Um, for what looks to be a hand could push in and just sort of slide it out of the way. Uh, the other door on a tree on the far side, a large oak, has a crystal. Sort of sitting on the ground going, I think I'm going to need a few minutes. I mean, I don't know how time works in this place, but uh, I don't look so good. <laughs> I mean, we could probably wait. Would we have time to take a short rest? Uh, I mean, you can attempt a short rest. <laughs> I mean, I can I can heal myself up a little bit, but it's not going to do me a lot. I, there's only so much I could do. I think if and, we can take a short rest, that would definitely be the the best plan. Okay. So y'all y'all hang around and rest in the clearing for half an hour or so. You successfully are able to finish a short rest. Uh, cool. Without then. without being disturbed. <laughs> Important distinction. A couple. Well, oh, I should only need one. But. Mm. Getting those bar Don't know why I'm holding back. No, I don't know why I'm going to bother but... holding on to one, but. <laughs> All right. What do you do now? Uh, Doors with indentations and handprints. Mm -hmm. huh? Well, last time I picked a door, this is how it went. Do I you... have a great deal of faith in my odds, but perhaps I shouldn't pick the next one. <laughs> um, okay. Well... 
what you said one has a handprint and one just has a like yeah it's a, a little indentation it's like a place to put your fingers as you try to like move or slide the door it seems to actually not pull towards you or push in but actually go to the side okay and neither Lock of them seem door. to be locked neither of them seem to be locked okay can we see through the crystalline door uh you cannot hmm. okay um, it's like a pinkish color um and it's too foggy to really make any details out on the other side of it, it seems rather thick Let's go through the crystal door. What's the worst that could happen? That's true. Mm. Hey, did anybody feel like using a... <laughs> just asking. <laughs> for a friend. <laughs> Whoops. Who was not desperately trying to rest and recover hit points. <laughs> yeah. Um, no worries. <laughs> clown has also, just never been played thinking a bard, so I'm like, ooh, about bard his things. cloud nemesis, so not not thinking of anything else it's um, understandable okay yeah okay a crystal door i mean these doors haven't been surprises yet we opened the one with the fighting on it and we fought a guy so um maybe we'll get a lot of money or crystal something door, maybe money yeah okay so somebody or someone you... might lose a hand i'm just saying <laughs> One of you it's puts true. your hand on the little imprint of the, the crystal door and you have that familiar like room almost like swallowing you. Uh, you are now standing in an enormous library. Um, the expanse of this library seems impossible. Um, you're not sure what si type of building this could exist in. Um, the shelves go upward and upward and on and you can't make out the top of them. And as you look down the rows, um, you don't really see an end. You don't see walls. You don't see uh, anything that indicates boundaries to this place. What are the books about near us? Um, are you taking one off shelf and reading it? Or are you just looking at covers? I'm looking at the spines. Um, so the spines just have a title on them. Um, a lot of the titles, like some of them seem like book titles. Some of them just seem like a little bit of nonsense. Like um the bradbury cheese is what one's called um there are others that seem more like you know a hero's journey and and things along those lines there are many of them that have no title um or nothing really written on the binding of them so there's definitely no theme no in this area not that you have located can I do a history check? Sure. See if I yeah. know anything about a, a huge mystical library. Okay. A 12. There are a lot of stories in history about large libraries that supposedly contain everything. It's hard for you at this point to really distinguish that this is how this one might be unique from any of those other stories. Okay. Um, and you said there was seemingly no end in sight to this. Seemingly no end in sight. Uh, is it a straight a straight path, or is it like a like shelves you can wander between? Uh, you can wander between them, like so. You you go straight down one, and there's eventually like a, a row going the the opposite direction that you can follow. Um, so if you do, you start wandering around. Not As too a, far. I just want to like look around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you glance around the corners, you can see. It seems to go on in both these directions. Um, you notice there doesn't appear to be any sort of signage. Like there's no like signs on the ends of a book row that say like, this is sections like medicine through history or something like that. Um, you do notice there appears to be um, a crow that was watching you uh, and it flies off. Cain, Cain. Okay. <laughs> um, you hear a voice in the distance and say, um, one moment. Oh. Um, yep. If you're loud in a library, eventually someone will find you. Yeah. Uh, should we just wait here? Uh, that's fine. I'm on my way. Uh, okay. It, and it sounds like the voice is, is in the stack somewhere. Um, after a few moments, um, a figure appears. Uh, they appear to be an elf. Uh, they're quite tall and um, thin. Uh, 
finely dressed and actually has like a monocle on uh, and says, uh, I am Lucian. I am the librarian here. Um, might I inquire of who you are and what are you doing here? Well, I'm a clown and these yes. are my circus friends. Okay. And uh, we were minding our own business and mm. then a book showed up and lots of words were written in it and now we can't read anymore. So, um, and then we fought a guy with mouth, mouth eyes and now oh. we're here. You so. fought the Corinthian. Yeah. And um, oh. someone, someone told you us see, to talk to try to write that down. Like, <laughs> the guy I'm going for. <laughs> it's on my list now. Oh yeah, he ate her eye, and I, I see that. <laughs> so I think we couldn't read because it's a dream. Uh, I mean, you are in the dreaming. We were, were able to read the book spines at least. Yes, uh, you are not dreaming though. Hmm. You are you are here as flesh and blood. So you're saying some of us with less of it than before. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Indeed. When we wake up, she still has one eye. Uh, I'm afraid so. Ah, well. Fine. If you were if you were truly here as dreamers, you would you would not be here in the library. What is this place for? This is the library that contains every story that has ever been dreamed. So are you Kane? No, I'm Lucian. No, he's Lucian. <laughs> okay, so why did you answer when we said Kane? Why there's not really supposed to be anybody else here, so uh, I was a little concerned about who was calling, calling for anyone. Uh, so you're in search of Cain. Yes. Well, we the book that we found said mm -hmm. that we were ilk of the shape Lord Shaper. The Lord then Shaper, my master. Talked to there was a, a walnut and a deer, and nope, acorn. Oh. It was an acorn. acorn and a deer. I definitely remember that. <laughs> in a mirror. And then someone told us to find Cain. It was the wyvern told you to find Cain. The wyvern yeah, told and that was actually Cain. before the acorn in the mirror. But yeah. I'm, okay, we've been in this for a while. <laughs> I've forgotten the order of events. The dream space is hazy. Yeah. The then we were in a maze. There was a lot of stuff happened. Then yeah. we came through a tapestry and fought the Corinthian. Now we're here. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like you have had a, a, a difficult go at it. How did you obtain this book that led you here? Mm, we don't know. It showed up. So we don't exactly know. Or a dream. A different dream. But this isn't a dream. So a different dream. We you found it a... when we awoke. Well, what happened in the dream? My lord is the master of dreams. Yeah. Eyes in a fire ringing any bells? With stars. Uh, he does have stars for eyes. Um, he mm -hmm. often appears as a fire. That's one of his forms. That he takes. What I mean, did he ask you to do? I appreciate that. <laughs> um, we uh, words are disappearing or something. That is true, um, and that is we're... becoming a very large problem for us. We were called to restore what is lost. He has asked you to go to the chamber of catharsis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kane, he's, well, the wyvern said that Cain would show us how to get there. Um. Yeah. Unless Kane. you know how to get there. Um, I cannot lead you there, but um, what are, are the all, odds? Yeah, uh, percentage wise, <laughs> pretty good. The door, the doors in the dreaming are all uh, a little ephemeral. They can be moved, changed. Their locations are not always structured. And the Lord Shaper can move through them as he sees fit. Most of his servants have a pretty good sense of how to move through them, but for most others, they are amazing of themselves. Um, okay, uh, this is another question. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy with the eyes, are we going to run into him again? Uh, what happened in your last encounter with him? Oh, uh, we hit him a lot and then he disappeared. Um, if he has lost his physical form, he will have to regain it. Um, it, will, it will be a while and it will require the Lord Shaper's intervention. Okay. So we got some time. Let's get a move on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The Lord Shaper will likely be upset 
if he called you here and you were attacked by one of his nightmares. At us? Or the nightmare? No, at, 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 at the Corinthian. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, we, we told him. We told him we were here for the Lord Shaper. Nightmares are often difficult to reason with. So you, can yeah. we get a refund on her eye then? Um, um, I cannot grant it. The Lord Shaper <laughs> may. <laughs> Uh, maybe and it's looks at Clown and goes, it wasn't, it wasn't actually made of gold. They're just gold colored. I'm, I'm just, not, yeah, <laughs> I'm saying if, if, if you're cool with not having an eye, maybe he can like, you know, compensate. We'll compensate. talk about it when all this is over. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that door. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He starts, uh, he walks you around a corner, um, and, uh, you have a question. Yes. Can I roll insight on this guy? Yeah. Ooh, I, I would also like to do that if he's on the up and up, you know, because I'm mm-hmm. big into that, but not really. 19. Yep. So you got 19. Uh, yeah. You think he's on the up and up. He doesn't seem to be lying to you at all. Doesn't meet any um, just dreams. <laughs> find this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you the, never the, know. He's on the bounty wanted poster. <laughs> That's right. Don't judge a book by its cover. They could be anywhere. Those bounties, is all I'm uh, saying. Um, as you, as he leads you around through the stacks. He seems to know some path. Um, it seems completely foreign to you, and and as you realize, as as the place that contains all of these dreams and the stories from them, there there is no real logic here. Um, he seems to be able to navigate it, um, but you realize there's not a structure to it. He just seems to, as the librarian here, have some sort of um metaphysical capability of doing that um but he's navigating this place and and sort of leading you and as he talks he says there is something very old in the chamber uh i'm i must warn you cain will likely not be particularly um forthcoming with his help you may have to goad him but um he fears nothing um and he will likely have some other scheme for needing, requiring you to convince him. Is Cain a nightmare? Cain is not a nightmare. Okay. Cain is a legend of old. <laughs> That's good. Um, and Cain is protected, which is why he fears nothing. Protected by who? By what? He is, he is protected sevenfold vengeance upon any who lays their hand upon him. Okay, don't touch Cain. Got it. Yep. That seems right, like that a, a nemesis you don't want yeah. also on your list, Cloud. Uh, you, you all recognize this story of the one who was cursed uh, by God to be protected. Um, mm-hmm. And that is, the, that is the criteria of his protection. Um, and he says, but he, he can be reasoned with, unlike the nightmare. Uh, and he leads you around, um, and he eventually opens up a, a, um, a little corner side to the bookshelf, and in a little alcove, there is a door. Um, it's old and wooden, and it has um, iron banding on it, um, and there is actually a large, broad splatter of blood on the front. Okay, that's pretty suspicious. He says the the doors here are are all pulled from people's dreams. They don't really coincide with anything that's beyond them. Um, and he says, this door should lead you to the House of Mystery, which is where uh, Cain resides. If you are able to to clear the the old evil that has entered the Chamber of Catharsis, you would, you would do us all uh, a great benefit. Wait, I have one more question. Sure. Why, why doesn't the Lord Shaper just do it himself? Lord Shaper is quite powerful, but he is bound by very ancient laws, as all very old and powerful beings are. There is one at play here that is quite frustrating for him that prevents him from intervening uh, in this particular housing. Had he known what was happening earlier, um, he might have been able to prevent it. But now that it has happened, he cannot do it himself, which is why he has reached out to the mortal world.
Okay. Well, we are that. We are that. Um, we are a circus troupe, so probably not the best, but I guess that's fine. All right. No, we're a very good circus troupe. I uh, <laughs> he says, if the Lord Shaper has chosen you, he believes that you are apt for this task. That's good to know. I I'm yeah. excited about the task. Look what I just went through. Uh, yeah, he could have like met us at the door or something, but I guess that's fine. We'll go find him. <laughs> okay, I try to go through the door. <laughs> okay, you go through the door. Uh, as you open it, um, there uh, appears to be sort of a, a strange foggy mist, and in the distance you can see um, the what looks to be like a wrought iron gate. Um, and as you, you enter, um, you realize there's sort of a flash second where you realize the, the room hasn't really swallowed you the way some of the others have. And there is a moment where um, Lucian actually reaches out his hand towards you and he says, no, wait, stop. Um, but at that moment, you fall, um, which is different than how you've entered the other rooms. Um, and previously you've sort of been swallowed up, but this time it's almost as if the ground came out from underneath of you. Um, you fall for a moment. You're not really sure how long. It's strange. It could have been a very long time, but you, you land gently uh, on the ground. Um, you are now on a, a cliffside. It is raining. It is dark out. Um, an inn that sits right on the cliff. Well, I could wow. use some food. I don't know about you guys. And I, See, I but it sounds the... like this is not where we were supposed to end up. Yeah, he said, no, Makes wait. That... that sounds bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely don't bad. Eat food. Don't eat food in dreams. Yeah, mm -mm. this seems like a trap. Didn't your mom ever tell you don't eat food in dreams? I was an orphan. Mm. <laughs> well... I'm your mom now, and I'm telling oh. you. Oh, okay. Yes, mother. <laughs> Don't eat food in dreams. <laughs> okay. Um, it's well, dangerous. Is, is, we're on a cliffside. There's nothing else except for this inn. Yep. Mm. Does that uh, light I mean, you can go check it, it out. But let's, there's yes. there's sound, and there is a there's actually a what do they call them? Basically, like a big placard on the hanging on the side of it, and it says mm -hmm. the world's inn. Hmm. I mean, that doesn't sound that bad. So, eh. Steal yourselves, troop. Okay. It may be an opportunity for a performance, though. Uh huh. Uh huh. Maybe we can get paid. <laughs> All right. Now we're talking. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll uh, we'll start marching over there. All right, so you march over there. There are large glass windows in the front. Um, even as you approach, you can see there is um, large fires in the fireplace. Um, it is well lit. Uh, there are a number of people in here. They are eating and drinking and talking. There's loud sort of uh, chatting going on. Uh, you notice some of the clientele is a little strange. The bartender is a um, centaur um, who is serving out drinks. Um, there is a large stage. It's currently unoccupied. Um, there are many magical creatures. There are elves, um, humanoids, some creatures that appear to be undead, but you get the impression aren't. They just sort of have the same pallor and they look like they're wearing clothes that are raggedy and torn, but they don't have wounds. They are, they're chatting and talking just like normal people. Um, there's a bit of a strangeness to that, but um, yeah, that's what you see through the windows. Do, do they look friendly? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all of them, like, they're all different and, and sort of some of them are quite strange and some of them are wearing clothes that you don't even necessarily, like, recognize their origin and what lands they might be from, but... I say we go in. I guess so. Okay. Lead the charge. Uh, so you enter, um, and when you open the door, you know, some people look up at you and, and sort of scan you over um, and, and sort of give you some nods. The the centaur behind the table is like, welcome to the world's inn. Um uh, new friends uh, and uh, sort of goes back to pouring drinks and stuff. Okay. Um, is there anyone in here that looks particularly out of place or weird? 
Um, the the undead ish people look out of place. There's also some people with clothes on that look. Um, they're not really there. I mean, it's like shirts and stuff, but they have very complex patterns on them, things that would take a very long time. And they're in a style that you've never seen. Um, so that's odd. You all do now that you're in here, notice there is a, a large doorway. It doesn't have a door in it. It's just sort of opening to a back room. Um, from the angle that you have at the front, you can see there appear to be a couple people in like hooded robes sitting at tables in there and they're just leaned over uh, the, the tables. Uh, I turn around to do like a group huddle thing uh, and I say, um, do you think we can trust the barkeep and ask him for help or should we be a little quiet about this? Uh, he seems friendly enough. But so did Mr. Nightmare. I mean, he didn't seem that friendly. Uh, Not when he was eating quite... the eyes. Maybe, maybe a so soft opener. Let's not jump straight into, hey, we're not supposed to be here. This <laughs> is not where we meant to end up. Here's who we're mm -hmm. looking for. Let's try a little more subtlety than that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who right. is the most subtle? Um, let's see here. I've got... I've got some of that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not subtle, but I'm persuasive. <laughs> what kind of check are we looking at? But I'd at also here? like to keep keep my eyes on some other people. Is that what you're doing? Um, I mean, I would like to Insight check the uh, barkeep. I want to employ some of my bounty hunting skills. Okay. So try to get some information from the barkeep. Um, so persuade him to tell me um, what, well, where we are, what he knows about um, the Lord Shaper. Uh, depending on the success of that, what he knows about Cain and getting to the place. I don't remember what it's called. House of Mystery. The House of Mystery. Um, and then insight to see if I think that he's telling me the truth about these things. Okay. Uh, Meanwhile, I'm going to drag the other two to a table and watch the room because I can read lips and I want to do some of that to see what people are talking about. <laughs> okay. Um, so... You give me a persuasion roll when you're reading lips and, and the people around, um, they mostly seem to be telling stories. Um, some of them are sort of these strange tales of worlds that you're not necessarily familiar with. Um, when they notice you sort of staring at them, some people are like, come over and like, listen to the story. If you want to like, listen to the story. Um, uh, persuasion check of 27. Uh, I mean, he seems perfectly friendly. He's like, you are at the world's end. This is where people who have fallen out of the world end up. Um, he tells you, I don't know anything about this cane. Um, the Lord Shaper you speak of, Dream, he is one of the endless. Um, he is one of the creatures that has existed since the beginning. He will exist until the end. Um, this is not, you are not in the dreaming anymore. If How do we here. get to the dreaming? I, I, everyone has their own path out of the world's end. Um, it is different for mm -hmm. everyone. Um, I, I cannot tell you how to get out because I did not know how you arrived and, and I don't know your story of how you'll leave. But you're free to stay here, room and board. We don't, we don't use gold here. We, you can either tell us a story or perform a song or something along those lines. Um, and we will give you food and shelter if you'd like, but yeah. Been here so long, I believe I've forgotten where I actually came from. Hmm. I'm one of a long line of barkeeps. The world's end has always existed. It's always been a place to catch those who've fallen through the cracks. Can I 
talk to one of the people that has a weird shirt on. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stroll on up real casual mm -hmm. and say, hey, that's a pretty cool shirt you got. Um, you she, think I can get one? She looks at you and, and says, she looks at her own shirt and says, it's, it's pretty normal where I'm from. Oh, she actually yeah. has a little bit of a head wound. It's been, it's got a little bit of a bandage on it. Um, and she says, yeah. Okay. Uh, so where are you from? New York. What is a New York? It's, it's where I'm from. I, I, okay. I, I get the impression a lot of people here don't really know where that's from. I'm still, I'm, I haven't been here that long. I'm still trying to figure everything out. How was, do you know? How did you get here? You know? I was in a car crash, I think. And I immediately turn around and go back to the table. You guys, I think we're dead. No, I just lost an eye. I didn't die. <laughs> yeah, but fairly certain of this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that person's dead. One of the one of the undead ish people say, "You're not dead. If you were dead, you'd be in the necropolis." Uh, it's like Tree said, we're in between. We have to get back. Hey, do you happen to know how to get to the dreaming? Yes. No. Uh, I don't. He goes cool. sit around for a while and have a drink. No, no, no. This is a trap of some sort. I just know it. Um, <laughs> no one eat anything. We're all keeping an eye on Barton. Don't eat anything. Um, when I come Barton. back, I say, I don't think we're dreaming. Maybe eating is fine. I don't know. My mom told me don't mm -hmm. eat in dreams. If this isn't the dreaming, then I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like that's even worse if we're not dreaming. It's an inviting door. Should we we should see if any doors? doors around here stand out. Yeah. Um, so there, there is the stairs that go up to where the bedrooms are, and there is the large opening. It doesn't have a door in it, but it does lead to another room in the back. Hey. I head towards it. <laughs> okay. Um, so you walk into this doorway. Uh, once you are sort of standing in it, what you can see is there's a room. It's full of small tables. Sitting um, at each of the tables, there is a hooded figure. Um, under their cloak, it is very dark. You can hear that they are mumbling something, each of them. It doesn't appear to be the same thing. Um, it's not like in tune with each other. Um, but they do appear to be mumbling without fail. They're not stopping or taking a breath, it even seems like. Uh, do they look similar to the robes that we saw in the garden? Uh, they do not. These are just sort of these sh strange, heavy, dark robes. And they're, it's so dark underneath of them, you can't even see the faces of what is under here. The other important part about this room is the whole back wall, uh, which you couldn't see up until this point, is just one very large window. And on the sky mm. outside over the cliff face, which is where it faces, um, there is a story being played out on the sky. And the story is there are images of plants coming to life and then dying. There is a calf being born and going through its entire life cycle before um, being butchered and, and feeding uh, a family for Christmas. Um, there's all these sort of strange images going on. And as one appears, it, it fades. And as you watch them, you notice there is a, there's a cycle. They seem to be things coming into existence and, and things leaving existence one right after another. Um, is there an open seat with these robed people? There are. May I go sit next to one? Sure. Okay, I sit down. Mm -hmm. Anything happen? Nope. Uh, hey guys, what's going on in here? They seem to pay you no mind. You guys want to hear can't. a joke? <laughs> uh, you hear a voice from the, the bartender go, they won't respond to you. They're busy. They're telling the story of all of existence. 
Two guys. Much fades all of a sudden. Okay. Tell the story of us leaving. Hey, hey guys. And uh, finding where we need to go. There were four very cool and very heroic circus performers. And tell the they, story where we get a long rest first. They they <laughs> fought valiantly and they're trying to reach the Lord Shaper and it would be very cool. No, it is very cool that they get a long rest and are totally well rested and and find their way to the Lord Shaper with no problem at all. So what you see depicted on the sky uh, outside is the four of you walking into this inn. Um, you do a little performance on the stage outside. You eat some of the food um, and you can tell like your wounds have healed a good deal. Um, and uh, it sort of fades away. And then they find the Lord Shaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, we well that's not who we're looking for. Yeah, we're looking for Kane. <laughs> and then and we the find Kane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for that one, you it just it just sort of shows an image of like a door opening. Um, you momentarily see a person with like their hair almost comes up into horns, um, and then that fades. What did that door look like? Um, it actually looked like a wooden iron banded door that had a spl splatter of blood on it. Mm. <sighs> okay. Um, well, what if we make that door? I'm sorry, are we carpenters we... now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I... Can we tell the story of that door? make it there what once we want it to be. There was a door and it was a really good door and it was wooden and it had a blood splatter on it and there there was an iron band on it and when you opened it you got to meet a guy named Cain. Um, so you see all this depicted in the sky. <laughs> and the entrance to that place was in this inn somewhere. Um you see like the inside of the inn and there's a door it doesn't actually exist mm. Mm. Uh, he tells you telling stories in there doesn't don't make doesn't make them happen <laughs> mm. he said their job is to decide when the world ends when more of them are telling a story of the world ending then the world will end then when there are more telling the story of it ending than there are telling it of a beginning let's not bother them <laughs> um, hey guys gals a youthful day a youthful day where um the world doesn't end. doesn't doesn't okay, doesn't bye. <laughs> okay uh well that didn't work um should okay but the the sky picture showed us doing a performance and then eating some food so should we do that? Well, I'm not opposed to a performance. I mean, I'm never opposed to a performance. But the Are barkeep, any of us ever? The barkeep did say that it doesn't make things happen. It's just a story that you I see mean, in the sky. If you perform, then we'll we could have some, a long rest. We'll give you some food. Yeah. <clears throat> he did explain to you that that was how it worked. Mm -hmm. Which would be good. Yeah, but what if what if we get stuck here? You did say not to I eat any food. You're right. Want to when we're here. dreaming. That's I said when we're dreaming, but we're not dreaming. It's been confirmed. Are you certain of that? I pinched myself. You feel like you're alive. I think I'm alive. Mm -hmm. yeah, can we just point out that I lost an eye while we were dreaming and we didn't think we were we, dreaming so. but we weren't Lu dreaming then Lucien, either Lucien told you specifically that y'all have not been dreaming since you've been here we, just we were just in the dream. dream you were in the dreaming mm -hmm. which is a place Yeah. yeah. are there so. any other like rooms besides the one with the, the uh, I mean there are stairs that go there's a kitchen in the back behind the bar and there's stairs that go up which you've seen taverns and inns that goes up to where the rooms are. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, hmm. Well, I guess we can just sit here. Well, we, if, if we all think it's okay to eat, I'm not going to complain about eating, which means I'm okay to perform the stage because I'm a little hungry. If you guys want to. If it's Agreed. Okay. Triniana pops out this uh, top hat. <laughs> Puts it on. I think it's time. Martin just like rips off his shirt. <laughs> so yeah. I tear away so. clothes. <laughs> Okay. Um, I I guess. Uh, right. This is a trap. Okay, fine. I guess let's do it. All right. Give me a description of each of your performances and roll me a performance check. Okay. Uh. So I use my horn to uh, get everyone's attention from the stage. In the moment uh, you step up Nith on the stage, Nithvari they're all looking will, at you. Nithvari will back you up with like a shower of sparks from the fireplace. She just kind of so, like waves a hand. Play a trill or whatever. Seen tonight and maybe <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> Do they seem agreeable? Yeah, they seem real excited okay. about this. Excellent. Great. <laughs> you so get the impression I'm... that most of their previous storytelling was done from people who probably aren't professional storytellers. Mm. Very uh, sad. I um, go through and give an introduction of my comrades and say what their um, specialties are and say that I'll be uh, hyping them up and providing some background music. Um, and get them all riled up and then i am um primarily accompanying um strongman with uh horn and the sword fighting with the flute and clown with the bagpipes like sad bagpipes, <laughs> sad bagpipes. <laughs> a variety of sad and happy bagpipes of course yeah all right Roll your performance check, and uh, we'll we'll move on to. Um, uh, I guess you went in the order, so I guess it would be Barden. I'm good with that. Uh, so I, I um I would like to use my last inspiration as well on Barden. Oh, okay. Going first. Um. Okay. Coraline. Oh, a... Yes. Sure. That has an image for you all. Yep. You know the strong man who trains the mice? Mm -hmm. I would like to hand bound onto the stage and have a little pose to start off. Um, and then I say, um, or Barton says, Hello, I'm Barton. Uh, can I have a, a helper for my strong act? Any uh, one of you, perhaps? Uh, one of the elves, the uh, male elf, hops up there and says, uh, I'll be your helper. Fantastic. Uh -huh. um, and then off my back, I heave my, uh, my war hammer. See that? It's a war hammer. Have you seen a war hammer before? Of course. Can you pick up this war hammer? It's pretty heavy. Don't Probably not. <laughs> I don't know. You might want to give it a try for uh, the audience. Yeah. He tries. You can tell he doesn't think he's going to be able to pick it up. Probably not his uh, his role in life. He dressed pretty fancily. Uh, and he tries, and he's like, nope, can't pick that up. That's very so, heavy. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, but look at this. And I pick it up, and I twirl it in the air, and I catch it, and I do a somersault forward, hang, uh, hitting it on the ground in front of the stage. Ooh, there's people clapping. They seem very excited about this. Uh, Brian tends to do that, at least. <laughs> Depending on the role. Performance check. Well, Nithvari <laughs> starts her. Yeah, her well, sorry, a little concerned. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say inspiration for each of you because we had a short rest. Oh, okay. Oh. I was going to say people could also pay it forward. <laughs> and what's it's a D6, the inspiration or D8. the D8. D8. Wonderful. I will right. be using that. 
Um, roll. There we go. That's happier. All right, Nithvari, what's your performance? Uh, there, there's a slight moment of hesitation because Nithvari is a little concerned uh, and decides not to try and implement her juggling skills since she has not had the time <laughs> to <laughs> figure out if she can do this yet. With, <laughs> after with less her most depth, recent depth wounding. reception. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she, uh, but she will, she will stand in front of the stage and fall back on one of her old routines which is essentially uh she is very used to telling stories two sides of the story herself using um her minor illusion capabilities her prestidigitation um and she will actually also cast unseen servant and if there's like a tablecloth or something she'll kind of like throw it over it so it looks like a little figure that she can kind of use to manipulate with her illusions um and uh for comparison's sake begins to essentially tell the combat story of uh the sword fight in Romeo and Juliet <laughs> in which Tybalt <laughs> yeah so she basically tells this combat story um using her skills to play both sides or to create the illusion of a combatant using the unseen servant and minor illusion and prestidigitation nice uh, so you are you're dodging back and forth. The people are watching and they're like ooing and aahing as you go. Go ahead and give me a performance check, and uh, we will jump to clown. All right, a clown starts off strong. Oh, with some... my inspiration. Too. Oh, okay. Um, clown bad. starts <laughs> off with some uh, some physical comedy and trips up the stairs and does some mime nonsense. And he gets up there. He's like, oh, you, you know, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then he rattles off like 10 different really bad dad jokes. Um, you know, I don't I don't trust stairs. They're always up to something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't eggs tell jokes? Because they, they crack each other up. Oh. And then he goes on like this for probably far too long. I enjoy your bad dad jokes. It's <laughs> probably some of the only jokes they've heard recently, but uh, <laughs> they are enthralled by uh, go ahead and roll uh, your performance check. Okay. <laughs> so you also got a bardic inspiration for a D8. Okay, I guess I'll add that. <laughs> I'll add my inspiration. Seems like a good idea. I, I need to yeah. add my inspiration. Throw it in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll. Oh, nice. So okay. 18. Uh, so you all um, do these performances. People seem enthralled. Um, you can order whatever you want. Um, the food here is, it's not amazing, but it's not bad. Uh, it's what you'd come to expect from a normal sort of inn that you would frequent a lot. Um, after eating, um, you have the benefits of a long rest um, from mm. this place. Um, as if the time spent um, performing and talking and eating um, is particularly restful here. Um, you, as you're sort of finishing and you're still talking to some people and they're going over parts of your act and, and you, you know, discussing with you what you did and other things that you might take on, um, a uh, scarecrow walks through the door uh, and the scarecrow has a pumpkin head uh, and is smoking a cigarette as he comes in and he looks around the bar for a second and he goes uh, so are there some uh, some uh, you know like bar Barty people in here maybe we're in the Myth dream shoots some sparks from her hand <laughs> right over here <laughs> maybe fell out of the dreaming through a hole he goes that's oh, us. Yeah, 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 that's us. He goes, oh, oh great us. great Excellent. Uh, yeah, y'all couldn't follow me. Sorry about that. We'll get you back where you were going. But wait, uh, who, who are you? Who are you? Uh, I'm, I'm Merv. Merv Pumpkinhead. <laughs> can I insight check Merv Pumpkinhead? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, okay. <laughs> oh. rolled nat 20. Nithvari is like... Oh, no. <laughs> somebody's not uh you don't think he's lying to you um he tells you uh yeah i work on the dreaming i'm sort of i'm sort of wouldn't call myself an architect but you know i, I do some important work uh there uh yeah lucian sent me um 
said, uh, See, the man with pumpkin heads on our side <laughs> said, uh, thought you may have fallen through a little gap there going through the door. Mm -hmm. Um, we, the, let's yeah. see, Nathvari, you notice there's a little bit of something about that gap that he's leaving out <laughs> that you fell through. Yeah. Mm. She gives like him kind of a, 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 a knowing look like he's leaving something out, but she's not going to call him out on it yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, he goes, but we, we can get you back. We can get you back where you were you were headed. You're going to the House of Mystery, right? That's what Lucian said. Mm hmm Right. Uh, yeah, he, he, like, gestures towards the door. After we get out the door, I ask him what he isn't telling us. What about that gap? Oh, he's... <laughs> It's just part of keeping the dreaming under order. Uh, normal moving things around. Yep. It was just all Coincidentally, normal. as we were going through that door. Well, it was already important mission. It had already been moved. Uh, maybe it wasn't. Maybe warning signs weren't up. Maybe. Uh, uh, does, oversight. Does the Lord Shaper not have full control over the dreaming? Uh, I mean, he has me put things together for him. The dreaming is a very large place, and a lot of times dreamers move things around. Um, I mean, also, the dreaming is a, I don't know if you noticed, but it doesn't stay the same very much. That's not sort of how dreams work. So it's sort of always moving around. Um, we just try to keep it to certain things in order, some passages and stuff for his servants to use. Um, there's not a whole lot of controlling the dreaming, although the Lord Shaper can move it as he sees fit. So uh, what, what's been going on recently? Anything weird? Uh, yeah, there's something in the something in the chamber. I don't know what. Not really any of my business. I'm just here to fix it. I'm sure whenever whatever it is is dealt with, they'll call me in there and fix whatever damage it did. That's the old Merv's job. And showing us where to go. Yeah, yeah, showing sort you of points with and, your hands. <laughs> and he's he walks you out to the area where you sort of landed, and um, you can see there's a door that looks very much like the door you went through. And he goes, "Yep, all fixed up. Uh, I have to move it back whenever y'all go through it, but it should take you to where you're going. Uh, not really supposed to be here. This is sort of where all the all the people land when when they fall through the cracks, you know." Cool. So you're you're just gonna leave them here? Well, they'll find their own way back, or they won't. It depends on what's supposed to happen to them. That's uh, that's the Lord Shaper's brother's decision, not mine. Who's that? Destiny. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's got a he's got a big book, kind of scary fellow. He's the oldest one. Of... Yeah, we saw him. Oh. Is the Lord Shaper nice? Uh. You can tell us. Ish. Not can, as nice yeah. as maybe not as nice as his sister, although she's the scariest one of all. She's the nicest, but the scariest. He's which what's her name? Well, she's death. She's nice lady. But the nicest. Yeah, super nice. Okay. But she's scary because, you know, she's death. Death, yeah. I mean he's not between you and me, he's a little moody, but he's a good guy, I guess. Sounds like my, my, my last boss. Can we go through this door, everybody? Get a move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you head through the door. Uh, it opens up. Yes. It looks very similar to it did the previous time. But um, as you as you sort of get swallowed by this, you hear Merv's voice in the background go, "Sorry about that. We'll just, uh, you're you're good now, though." Uh, <laughs> as you vanish into the door. Um, on the other side of the wrought iron gate, um, there is a figure who looks very familiar. You saw him in the sky. He has this red hair, a sharp features, a sharp beard, and his hair almost comes up into these little horns. Uh, and he is um, seemingly burying a corpse uh, in the front yard of this house. Um, there's a tombstone there. Uh, emblazoned on the tombstone uh, is the name Abel. And um, sitting on the tombstone is a strange little yellow creature. Uh, looks almost like a, a featherless chicken. I say Cain. Hey. He's like, he looks up from his digging and is like, yeah. We're here to talk to you. Well, come in. Thank you. Need any help with uh, that? Nah, I've done this a lot. 
Oh. What's that weird chicken? That's a, that's a gargoyle. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah, he's he's a little one. Ah, oh, that's cool. Okay. Be nice. Uh, I mean, he's still pretty young, so I don't know. Can maybe. I pet it? I mean, I wouldn't coddle him too much, but maybe a little bit. I try to pet the gargoyle. <laughs> it it seems to like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, all right, enough. He's gonna get. He's gonna. He's gonna be spoiled. Okay. Sure. Can't treat him too nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um. Anyway, uh, we we uh, we are here. Well, who are you? Well, uh, I'm a clown. Yeah, I got that. that. Okay. Yep. And these these are my clown friends. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm Bart. No, we're not clowns. Not clown. <laughs> we're the clowns' friends. Yeah. Yes. Um. Right. And. We are looking for the Lord Shaper. Well, we're looking for catharsis. We are looking for, you know, there's words disappearing and now we can't read. And <laughs> oh, yeah, you're trying to get to the chamber. Yeah, yeah right. apparently. Yep, yep. Oh. Well, good luck with that. Do you know well, how to get there? See, yeah. we need your help. Oh, well, why should I? Well, okay, so there is like a big griffin at the door. He he told us your name and he said that you have to help us or else he's I don't have to do anything. gonna come in here. Nothing he's in my a really con- big griffin. Nothing in my contract. I'd like to see him try. <laughs> what is what in you- your contract? Yeah. Uh, I'm supposed to tend the house of mysteries. What's the what house does of that mysteries? entail? This is the place where all secrets and dreams and mysteries enter and leave the dreaming. Hmm. But you you're employed oh. by the Lord Shaper. Yes. Okay. Um, I have so a contract. what benefits him benefits you. Hmm. Helping maybe it us. Does, maybe it doesn't. Benefits everybody. What do you like? Tell me about yourself. So you really want to get to the chamber? Yeah. You're I mean, deflecting. Want is a strong that, word, but that's I mean, where that is our a journey is move. heading. It says, I'll tell you what. I'll play you in a game for it. If you win, I'll take you. Nithvari's one eye lights up. <laughs> it says, we'll play the oldest game. Hmm. The murder? Uh, <laughs> 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 Wait, what? <laughs> Way to call him out. <laughs> Guys, I think he's going to try to kill us. No, so y'all can roll a history check to see if you know what the oldest game is. <laughs> okay. Would I get any sort of? I would you make get an a, argument you get for advantage, advantage. Yes, yeah, you get advantage because is... you're a gambler. <laughs> All right, Nithvari uh, has got a twenty. 20. Uh, Trin, Trini, Tree, you also got a sixteen. So we're gonna go with. Um, the both of you have heard um, the oldest game is a game of essentially like one upsmanship. Um, mm-hmm. And it is played in a very specific way. Um, two people, uh, one starts and you have a statement. So you say, I am something. Then you provide two um, essentially adjectives about what you are. The next person then has to immediately, without hesitation, respond that they are something else that overcomes the first. So if you were to say, I am the wolf biting, clawing, then your response might be, I am the the knight horse or um, wolf killing um, horse riding. And then the other person responds, I am the spider, knight biting, poison injecting. And you have to keep going like that. Whoever hesitates or provides a response that fails to overcome the previous one loses. Um, So for the purposes of this game um, and the way we're going to play it, uh, I will be rolling to see if Kane fails at the game. Um, So after your thing, there will be a moment where I have to roll and I will tell you what his response is and whether he has hesitated or not. You, however, have to respond to whatever Kane says without hesitation immediately um and so he says you he immediately sees the gleam in your eye nithvari and says you look like someone who's ready to play the oldest game she she immediately is looking nervous because this is not one of her games (laughs) 
she's like, mm, you know, she's sort of looking at the backs of her hands and you all know she has tattooed on the backs of her fingers. She has dice and cards and chess pieces. This is this is not her kind of game. And she seems a little hesitant. She says, I, I can, but the odds may not be mine. <laughs> game called chess. <laughs> chess is boring. <laughs> this is the oldest game. Why does it have to be the oldest? What, what's your... What I mean, how long have you is. been here? You're just going to sit here and play the oldest game forever? Uh, Pretty boring. I mean, it's a fun one. Dude, guys, this guy's boring. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the one who knows how to get to the chamber and you don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's fine. I guess we'll just hang out here with you forever if you want. Okay. Anyway, can I touch the, the griffin again? <laughs> gargoyle yeah the gargoyle can i touch the gargoyle again just a little bit okay hey what are you digging what is that my brother's grave why did you kill him yeah oh you're like really into murder and stuff mostly just him why just him He's annoying that's not really a good reason yeah it's good enough mm -hmm. you don't have to deal with them every day I mean, I don't know. Well, well, how many times did you kill him? Just some calculations. I don't know. I stopped, I stopped counting after a few thousand. Oh, you just, you got to do it every day? No, just whenever he annoys me. Oh. Sometimes multiple times a day. How does he annoy you? Been. What does he do? It's just incessant talking sometimes. Yeah, it's a he, lot of he things. He talks a lot. Oh, that, yeah. I can't even imagine. That he doesn't know how to like name a gargoyle worse. right either. He, what, what? What do you name it? Goldie. Goldie, I mean, that's pretty cute. That's not a hey, good name for a gargoyle. What's up? I pick up the gargoyle. I start coddling it. Start Stop coddling it. it. No, I can do what I want. <laughs> uh, he reaches out to take it from you. I move back. <laughs> you have to do a uh, pose dexterity. I think, I think there's a whole new game getting funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the much more dangerous game. <laughs> Oh, shoot. <laughs> it's a tie. It's a tie. It's a tie. <laughs> Two fives. It's real bad. Y'all just watch them like fumble at each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he gets his hands on it and but can't wrestle it away from you and he's like, let it go. Why? Wait, is it important to you? Uh, no, you're just going to ruin it. Why do you care if I ruin it? Because it's his. What do you, I thought you didn't like him. I have my own gargoyle, and you actually look up at the top of the house, and there is like a full-grown gargoyle, like looking down at you, um, and sort of staring at you through the mist. Okay. Um, well, you don't have to threaten me. I'm just trying to figure you out. Uh, okay, guys, one of you needs to play this game. I tried my thing. It's your turn. <laughs> what happens like if we lose? He says, uh, I'll take something from you. Mm -mm. That's really vague. Yeah. She just points to her face. She's like, I have lost enough today. Words are not my game. <laughs> he goes, I don't know, maybe like your confidence. Oh, that seems pretty messed up. We need that. We're bards, all of us. What else you got? He like looks you over. He's looking over you specifically, um, Barden, because <laughs> you brought it up. Hmm. He's like, mm. I mean, I don't have much, but I, I really like what I have. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't, wouldn't and like, a challenge it otherwise. Like, why would you need my things? You clearly have so much. It looks at the house. It seems really. sort of selfish. Do you want my brother? I can give you my brother. You can have a different brother. Maybe. Yeah? Yeah. No, I'll take your brother. brother. Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, let's play this game. <laughs> in for your brother. Nice. <laughs> All right. So do you understand the game or do you need a... Um, okay. So I have to... It's noun, adjective, adjective. So it's I am something. And then the two adjectives essentially that come after it need to describe how it overcomes the previous one. So if it's like I'm the wolf biting, slashing... Which would which which would kill you know a normal person? Right. Then the next one has to be something to the wolf. Okay. Um, so he he says, are... 
I'll start. Um, Wait, before you start, uh-huh. you yeah, said just to clarify. After, after every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> but but clown wouldn't be doing any rolls because no. I was going to enhance ability if I thought it was going to help, but I can't. Clown, clown just Can has. Dehance uh, Kane's ability. If we saw Wait, do we have another one of those I, rolls? Do we have a another team? Mine's a fourteen, yeah. yeah. And the last one so, we have is a so fourteen. So I will just for y'all's uh, sake and meta knowledge, he is not rolling a d twenty. Okay. For this. He's rolling a d fifty. The d one hundred. D one hundred. Everything above one is a success. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's how that works. That would be so uh, silly. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't have any debuffs and Nithvari would be opposed to that she she doesn't bend the rules it's not gambles. sporting it's, it's not, not sporting. sporting it's not fair <laughs> Wait, can this be a team game uh maybe uh can i can I, this you know can i tap out I mean, where i get tired you can if you think it'll go that long you can tell me during uh his like while i'm rolling for him that you're gonna direct this his next thing at somebody else oh like <laughs> popcorn are you gonna are you gonna get their consent to do this or are you just gonna be like nope it's their turn <laughs> no this, this is just gonna be a like a hot potato you know oh, okay see who's ready for it uh all right guys start thinking of adjectives okay i'm gonna go you guys move your brains uh, i am the chart <laughs> Oh, he tar- <laughs> <laughs> so he so he doesn't lose for he only loses if the dies don't turn out the right way. Okay. Um, uh, Fastest loss ever in the oldest game yep. ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stumbled the very first one. Um, I am the tiger, night stalking, claw slashing. Uh, I am the human, tiger hunting, eating. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He has not failed. Are you passing it to someone else? No, I'll keep going, I guess. Okay. Um, I am the rattlesnake, human biting, poison injecting. I am the eagle, far seeing, claw grabbing. He has not failed. Uh, <laughs> that one's a little too real. I was gonna do. I was gonna do like flu. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, maybe not during the no. pandemic. Well, we'll go. Nope. <laughs> um, I am the arrow, straight flying, bird, sl- bird, and, ugh, bird piercing. I am the iron sword, bow cutting, flesh searing. Arrows don't have flesh, but all right, we'll count it. <laughs> uh, he didn't fail again. That is Jeez. Four. Um, I am the volcano, iron melting, sword ruining. I am the god, all seeing, fire putting outing. <laughs> yeah. That one's a, that 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 one's a little close. <laughs> uh, uh, I am lack of faith, uh, god ruining, um, no followers. I am human compassion, all consuming and encouraging. Ooh, fancy. Still hasn't failed though. <laughs> uh, uh, I am hopelessness, compassion ruining, sadness fulfilling. I am hope, light bringing, disaster destroying. <laughs> He has failed. Yes. He has nothing yes. to respond. Yes. Uh, and I want to I want to point go, this out go, because clown. I find it immensely appropriate. In the book, the one that Dream wins the oldest game on is Hope. Huh. <laughs> so nice. you used you actually won the game using the same one. And that Dream nice. wins the <laughs> game <laughs> on. <laughs> so unbeknownst to us, doing a real great job of uh adhering to this literary work um but yes he he stumbles at the idea of hope uh you can tell he is a bit of a miserly person and the idea of overcoming um the sense of hope is a little bit beyond him um and and so he sort of he lowers his head and he says all right i'll take you there 
um, and he he leads you into the house. Um, it is sort of an old Victorian style house. Um, and he, he leads you through a number of doors sort of in rapid succession. And you realize they're taking you to all these different places. You're walking through various hallways um, that are in different locales. Some of them are outdoors. Some of them are between strange places. At one point you pass through the desert and you go from one door to another door, all in fairly rapid succession. But eventually you come to a large stone door and uh, above it, marked um, are the words ahead of you as a place of sort not a place of swords or wands but of words uh, and he says this is the chamber of catharsis um, I have fulfilled my part of the deal uh, do you still want my brother you can have him well, I, didn't, I didn't win I guess that's true tough luck man <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping that brother I don't want <laughs> Uh, and he says, I'll leave you, I guess. Good luck. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes back to the door. Okay. So, not a place of swords. Kind of upsetting for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> <she's> like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> what about daggers? Bombs. Is it a place of daggers? Who knows? That's not a. Uh, this place needs words, I think. Everyone just like, you know, think of words real quick. Just that we can use. Okay, I'm ready. Right, got some words? <laughs> yep. Go, you go through the door. Uh, you enter the chamber. It's a large circular room, about 60 feet in diameter. On the ceiling, a stream of words are entering the room. You can see them almost written in the air. You also hear them as whispers as they pass by you. They are funneled into the center of the room as they pass overhead, um, where they are enter a little singularity um, as they're being gathered. On the far side of the room, they're sort of shrouded in shadow as a large misshapen creature. It is reaching up and plucking words from the streams like wisps with its long spindly arms. When it hears you enter, it turns to face you. You see a monstrosity or a fiend. It's very hard to tell uh, what its nature is. It is composed of three parts. The bottom is a large spider covered in human eyes. Riding on its back, or perhaps growing from it, is a middle-aged woman with blonde frazzled hair, ragged leather armor, and carrying a large jar under one arm and wielding a broken staff in the other. Floating above her head, though seemingly somehow attached or bound to the lower body, is the mummified head of a satyr. They tell you to leave in an eerie, singular voice as the woman goes to shove one of the wisps down her gullet. Hey, you, you stop that. We can't do that. <laughs> We're here for you. Their, their voice echoes as three. <clears throat> and says, then you die here. No, um, wait, no, no. The door said no swords. So you can't do that. A roll initiative. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> you can see that that there's a wooden staff in the the one the woman's hand, but that is mm -hmm. uh, the only weapon you immediately see. Wait, can I do a history check real quick before we do initiative? Uh, sure, I'll let you do that. Woo! Okay. She seems like a very unique creature. It is quite a unique creature. Ooh, that's. That's that very, very history. Um, this, you, you recognize this description. This is a very ancient monster. Um, it, its origins, you're not 100% sure on. It, some people claim it's from like the Nine Hells. Others that it was some sort of ancient thing that's just always existed, some sort of monstrosity. You know that it is called the All's Bastion. Um, and that it is not necessarily like a creature of fighting, but it takes and gathers things, uh, which makes sense given that it is it is trying to take up all these words and is succeeding up until this point. <coughs> so okay. we wait. You said all's bastion. Mm -hmm. All one word. Yep. You also know with that role that it is a singular creature despite its appearance. On that 20 on that. It's fine. Oh, just drop that on us. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
We only had two people roll that once. <laughs> only that two. All? <laughs> only half our party. Yay. I mean, uh, at least it was for initiative and not for like. That's right. There's no critical success or failure yeah. on initiative. So that's fine. Uh, yes. So um, let's do these. Let's do these checks. So they're going to go first. Um, you hear them speak in this threefold voice together. And they say, um, the horses of Osmandius rode together, their blades from the horseback slashed at the, the foes that stood before them. Uh, and you see in this place, as these words are spoken, these sort of ethereal horses like rise up out of the ground, almost like a wave, and rush over you. Um, they are particularly seem to be targeting um, tree and um, uh, Barden. Ardenen. Uh So I'm going to make these rolls. Or tree. That was almost a two. So that's going to hit. I'm assuming that's going to hit both of you. I, I have a 15. 15? Okay. Yeah. Those mm -hmm. both hit then. Um, as this rushes over you. Um, uh, and you each take 11 points of force damage um, as these sort of ethereal things rush over you. Um, and you feel these strange blades slice into your bodies. Uh, Nithvari, you're up. Mm. This seems a little weird. Not sure I like this. Um but since words it seems to be, I'm going to hold off on blades for the moment. I will cast uh, Dissonant Whispers at, I think I'm going to start with second level, see what happens. Because I don't know what this is going to do. Um, but aside from uh, her usual, well, let's cast this and see what happens. Uh, right? Is it a, it's a saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Okay. You go to cast this magic, and it seems to just fizzle out. Um, and you remember mm -hmm. back to the words that was, this is not a place of swords or wands. Um, so it you go to cast it, but the magic just can't be pulled. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool. As a bonus action, I will inspire... Um, tree because i think she's after me okay but i'm like mm, magic's not working <laughs> tree she's just like shaking up. her sword going <laughs> why Do would I it feel work inspired yeah okay inspiring is just like um i uh step up and say a great uh boulder hurled from the heavens smashes down on the all bastion's head okay uh, throwing um, it to the ground so are you trying to hit one of them two of them all three of them i will say for for out of game purposes they you will do more damage if you try to hit like all three of them or two of them mm -hmm. versus one of them but they mm -hmm. are harder to hit okay um all three of them okay Give me a performance check. Barbins. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Twenty-two hits. You may 22. roll two D twelve and add your charisma bonus to the damage. Charisma bonus is three. Um, so you watch as um, this uh, ethereal meteorite simply falls through the ceiling and crashes into all three of them, and they're they're thrown back, um, caught off guard by this. Um, they seemed not to expect you uh, to be capable of doing this. Um, yeah, and they they seem the hurt by this. There's the one of the spider's leg is is sort of twitching um under the force of this but yeah that seems to have hurt it 
Excellent. Then I use uh, Charge of Bardic Inspiration for Clown and tell them you did such a great job with Kane. You can do this. Nice. I'm so fun. inspired. <laughs> so inspired. Uh, clown, it's your turn. Uh, okay. <clears throat> My performance isn't very good, though. Okay. Um, uh, clown will say very dramatically, he pauses first for dramatic effect and looks around. And then he looks at the all Ashton and says, a godlike bolt of lightning comes down and chars her to the ground. Nice. Um, go ahead and give me a performance roll. Are you attacking one, two, or three of them? Um, so if you're worried about it, if you attack one, it's essentially their armor class is lower than it is if you hit all, try to hit all three of them. Um, I'll try to attack the spider body. Okay, so just one? Yeah. All right, go for it. Eleven. You're going to use your bardic inspiration? Oh, yeah, I have a bardic inspiration. Oh, no, that's a d10. Oh. Fourteen. Um, as you... Um, go to cast this um you see your bolt of lightning forming um give me a charisma saving throw uh-oh i'm gonna get hit by a bolt of lightning <laughs> charisma saving throw charisma. So you failed your charisma saving throw. Um, you 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 like go to say the words and finish this almost incantation, and you see the woman pull the lid off this jar, and you feel your voice pulled with it, uh, mm -hmm. and it goes into the jar, and she slams the lid on it. Um, you are currently unable to speak. Um, uh, you can make a, a saving throw. Repeat the saving throw on your subsequent turns. Um, so she has used a reaction essentially to try to capture your voice uh, after seeing what the first attack did to her. Um, you have anything you're gonna do with bonus action? Uh, can I still give a bardic inspiration if I can't talk? Uh, I mean, I'm saying I'll say since, especially since you're a clown, you could do some physical inspiring, <laughs> some sort of like <laughs> little dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna look at Tucker and give him like a you're you're gonna do the thing and like kill her. Yeah, <laughs> do a double thing, double guns. Yeah. <laughs> dabbing, yeah. <laughs> dabbing. <laughs> Arden, you're up. Uh, noticing to a degree what's going on, uh, Barden says, um, uh, "In the days of the dragon invasions, the skies were filled with nothing but fire." Oh, fancy! Are you attacking one, two, or all three of them? Uh, I'll do two. Two. All right. Give me a performance check. Thirteen. I will be adding the D eight. Hypothetically, there. Ooh, Ooh, eight. Nice. So that's a twenty-one. So that hits. Uh, roll. Roll me two D eight plus your charisma bonus for that. 2d8 no 2d8 plus five no that's plus two it's not plus five where is it so it's going to be eight instead of ten okay All right, your fire from the sky lights up. You see the this weird mummified head uh, sort of catch into it and burn a little bit um, as it uh, takes some damage. Um, let's see, it's actually the All Bastion's turn. And, and at that fire, it actually looks, the, the little mummified head stares down at you, Barden. Yay. Uh, I need you to make me a uh, wisdom. 
Nice. Ooh, wonderful. There is, hmm. there is a moment where you feel your mind and body being dominated, um, but you are pull your force of will and strength and you reject this domination. Uh, and that is its turn because it can only can only do the dominate thing or the other stuff. So it is now Nithvari's turn. Uh, Nithvari sort of starts to reach for a blade and then sort of stops herself again. And she looks up and sort of, you know, half smiles and she says, um, chained by roots that writhe and branches that bash and crush. Ooh, and she's fancy. kind of obsessing over the idea of, in, of, of containing it. <laughs> Okay, uh, so go ahead and um, uh, are you attacking one, two, three? How are you? How are three. You I'm just going for the whole thing. She's, whole thing. Yeah. All right. Give yeah, me. Yeah, go uh, for the whole thing. Give me an uh, performance check. Mm. Nice. Ooh. That's gonna hit. Ooh. Uh, Yay! Give me two d twelve plus your charisma bonus. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's not a great roll on 2D <laughs> or 2D12. No, uh, not at all. You see these vines reach up and they wrap around the whole the whole three group of them and they're pulling and trying to crush at them and they're um, fighting against these ethereal vines. Um, they seem upset by it. Um, all right, we are to tree. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, let's see here. So is this creature like grappled? Uh, like, are they? You don't get the impression that they're grappled. Okay. Do, based on what I saw happen to Barden, um, does it seem like like it was the thing looking at him that was the problem? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's um, like eyes lit up in a really creepy way. So um, I don't like that. All the weird <laughs> stuff with eyes. I'm apparently not a big fan. Um, so I say um, uh, the All Bastions eyes uh swole and closed uh and it was not able to see anything surrounding it okay uh are you, are you attacking one two or all three of them all three all three all right give me mm -hmm. a performance check oh a two it's an eight it's very close. all right not great. Uh, you see the um, you see some little mites and start to um, uh, form on their body and and try to attack them, but they are able to sort of shake and the, the etherealness just sort of you're unable to hold its form. Uh, at the beginning of your turn, you may make another charisma saving throw to try to get your voice back. Okay. Saving throw. Yeah. I, Do you want to use your bardic inspiration? I, I don't. I don't. Mm, yeah, I'll, mm, yeah, I'll use it. I'll use it. Okay. I'll use it. Um, I shouldn't have used it. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are unable to pull your voice back. Um, you can still take actions and um, bonus actions if you have them and they don't require your voice. Um, I don't think I can do anything. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll look at Barden again and give him another like, like you go punch, punch, but like with your words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> punch with your words. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Barden, you are... Uh, Barden says, uh, the air was chilled to the point that they thought they might die. Ooh, creepy. 
Are you attacking all three of them too? Yeah, I'll just attack all three. Okay, give me an attack roll or performance check. Sorry, yeah. Nineteen. Nice. Nineteen. Nineteen hits. Lovely. So give me two d twelve plus your charisma bonus. Plus two. <laughs> wonderful uh so you see the room freeze over um and uh, especially around them and as it gets cold uh there is definitely a like cracking that you hear on the the surface of the spider's like carapace um as it's trying to move against this uh freezing i'll, but, yeah. I'll also bark and spire back to clown and be like uh did you see what i just did <laughs> it, it's it's a gesturing inspiration but nice. showing off clown is right. touched clown is touched um all right so uh it's back to the all's bastion's turn you hear the the three of them in this uh hissy sort of voice that they have um say um the waves of the ocean poured over the sides the boat could not stand. Those that were on it were crushed under the waves and the carelessness of the sea. Um, and you hear these waves sort of sloshing along in the wind. Um, and they, they reach up through the floor and, and start sort of pounding at you. Um, they are going to hit at um, Nithvari and Tree, it looks like, from this. And I'm going to make these checks. Nithvari. Uh, that's probably not going to hit Nithvari. What's your armor class? It is not. A 26. Uh, and you take, <laughs> ooh, max damage. 17 points of uh, force damage uh, sure. from that attack. Uh, and it is Nithvari's turn. Uh, Nithvari sort of smirks again and she says, uh, a blade of sharpened steel that bites and slashes. Renderer, sunderer, splitter, limb breaker. And then she winks up at it and she goes, wielded by one who knows. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, yeah. All right. How many of you atta are you attacking? I am going to focus on the spider legs. I want to okay. split some limbs if I can. <laughs> Going on one. All right. Make attack roll. Yep. Or make um, a performance check. Sorry. I keep saying attack roll. In this place, these Yeah, which I'm rolls. not. <laughs> Ooh, Ugh, nope. Nope. Um, so you Ooh. notice, because it doesn't know whether or not you're succeeding or failing, the spider actually reaches out, and as your words start forming, it sort of grabs them. Um, you would have to make a charisma saving throw, but you don't because you didn't hit. But it seems to be trying to do something with your words, um, and then they sort of fall apart, and it um, so it's unable to do whatever it was attempting. But that does use its reaction. Um, do I think that I can, because magic didn't work, do I think I can heal here? Or do I think that would fail too? Um, if, if it was healing Or maybe word, I just have to try it. You could if it yeah, was. Yeah, it is. Healing word will work here. Literally because okay. it's healing word. <laughs> A word, yeah. That's what I was wondering. But like um, your wounds would not. So as a bonus action, I will uh, heal tree because that was a not nice hit. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, thank you. Where's healing word? Cast that magic. And it is tree's turn. Okay. Have some eight points of healing. <laughs> Excellent. Apply healing to me. Nom, nom, nom. Um, okay. So I am going to go ahead. Um, I don't know that I've ever cast Healing Word on myself before, but I believe I am a creature that I can see within range. Yeah, you can cast it on And I cast on it on myself. Okay. Yeah. That's good. You, you got to do this first. Yep, I'm in range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick first um because i was very hurt um so that helps a lot um all right um 
let's see here. So is it still like attached to the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, I am going to target two, uh, okay. like the bottom portion. Um, and I, um, uh, shit, where's the place we are? The chamber, the chamber of <laughs> catharsis, uh, washing the creature into the wall. Mm. So, uh, go ahead and give me a performance check. Performance. That's going to be almost a 19, but not a 19. It's a 9. Yep. That is going to miss. All right. I'm going to use my last bardic inspiration. Um, You've already used your bonus action. Oh, yeah. I had to heal me because I was dying. Mm -hmm. True. All right, Next clown. Time. Beginning of your turn, you can make that a uh, charisma save. Woo, okay. I think really hard about wanting to talk again. Charisma save. You hear a voice whisper out to you from the Alls Bastion and said, Isn't this what you wanted all along? Spooky. <laughs> How does it know? <laughs> um, clown. Okay, nope, nope. Clown doesn't think about anything. His mind goes blank. <laughs> <laughs> Working on that charisma save? Yeah, yep. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, Barden, it is your turn. Um, uh, the cavern shook, sending stalactites plummeting down towards the cave floor. Uh, all right, you attack in... Uh, one, two, or three of them? Three of them. Three. All right. Give me a performance check. Nice. That's going to hit. Uh, you get to roll uh, 2d12 plus your charisma bonus. Nice. That, that is some serious damage. That is nice. Nice. Yeah. So you see these stalactites, ethereal fall from the ceiling, uh, seemingly from nowhere, and crash into it. Um, I'm going to let you... Actually, I guess I should roll because it's a saving throw. Um, we'll see how this plays out, specifically because of the way you chose to attack. Uh, here we go. Um, okay. So at the very last second, the woman is able to move the jar out of the way as one of these stalactites falls towards it. Um, and she's holding on to it and trying to keep the lid on. Um, yeah, but that is some serious damage. You see the spider take one of the um, those uh, falling stalactites like right in its thorax and it lets out a hissing scream and it comes from all three of them, even though the pain seems to be for the spider. Um, but it is quite hurt. Um, but now it is its turn. Um, I, bardic inspiration. And just a reminder, Clown, you do have one as well. Yeah, yeah, I still have one. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, it's going to make an uh, attack on, it looks like, Barden and Nithvari uh, as it looks at the two of you and says... Um, the gaping mouth of hell opened up and its fires burned across the floor. Um, those who were foolish enough to stand in it could never clear the scars they bore. Um, performance check. All right. Thvari. Uh, that one's going to hit. Um, mm -hmm. Arden. Mm. <laughs> what? Mm. Uh, so those are going to hit. Oh, no. Uh, so you each take 10 points of um, force damage as these ethereal fires erupt from the ground underneath of you and you get this strange glimpse of this underworld beneath. Um, it is force damage, though. It's not fire. I was uh, real excited. I was like, couldn't it be real fire? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm resistant to that. <laughs> Uh, it's all fake fire. Uh, Nithvari, you're the up. Worst. 
uh, Nithvari, uh, she gestures as if she was throwing a dagger, but there is no dagger in her hand. And she says, uh, dagger thrown with grace and aim, an eye for an eye, darkened blade with poison thick. Uh, quit while you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I have a chance. Uh, I mean, great. Give me a. Or, She's a gambler. <laughs> how many are you uh, attacking? Uh, uh, I'm just gonna go for one because this is not my my greatest okay. stat. Okay. Which one are you attacking? <laughs> the spider. I'm still working on that creepy spider. Okay. Probably not with a twelve though. Uh, with a twelve? Uh, no, that does not hit. And uh, bonus action. I think the only person not inspired right now is Barton. I am inspired. So she will. Oh, you are. I am. Somebody not. Okay. No. I, everybody is. Okay. Then I'll just sit on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Never right. mind. We are over to tree. All right. Um, how bad are y'all looking? I'm halfway down. Oh, I didn't realize that I could have healed somebody. Doing okay. All right. Um, then, <clears throat> uh, Nithvari, you don't have inspiration at the moment. Is that right? I do not. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, so, I am going to say the jar began to course with heat making it impossible to hold mm, okay and i'm targeting just that one the middle one okay Give me all right that is seven points all right you see this um the woman who's holding this um sort of wry the moment as she's trying to hold onto the jar and this will actually knock the lid off of it um clown you feel your voice return from the jar as it um escapes um the jar isn't destroyed and she is still holding on to it but um there's attacking it directly does seem to have freed the voice that was trapped inside um yeah you can do anything All with right. your bonus action I'm inspiring uh, Nithvari. All right. Clown, you are up. The clown is excited that he doesn't have to become a mime. <laughs> um, but he is going to say, um, a raging gale ripped through the spider as a tornado and try to like get all of them together and get all three of them yeah okay Give me a performance might as well check. <laughs> charisma it's a charisma check right performance check performance oops mm. why am i so bad at performance <laughs> Uh, 10 is not going to hit. Um, no. Oh, uh, I will attempt to you. No, I don't. I don't think my bardic inspiration is going to do anything. For yourself? Yeah. Don't you, you have a thing where you can roll it as part of an attack roll, don't you? Yeah, but only, <clears throat> I can add it to the damage, but only if it hits. Oh, okay. For damage. Um, but. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll hold on to my bardic inspiration for now. Okay. Uh, Barden, you're up. Uh, once more, I look to all three of them. Uh, the eye things. Um, not my friends. Uh, and say, um, uh, toxic spores sprung into being um, blinding and burning. Mm. Make me a uh, performance check. Very good. Ooh. You are you are smashing into them. Two D twelve plus uh, charisma bonus. Nine points of damage. Uh, 
All right. Uh, you you see this poison start searing into them. Um, they're looking pretty rough at this point um, as these these ethereal things are dealing very real damage to them the same way they're dealing real damage to you, you guys. Um, so, yeah. Uh, you got anything else to do, Barden? Uh, no, I'm out of inspiration. Uh, all right. They are going to attempt again. Um, the, uh, they look to you and say the legions of the undead um, came to them. Um, from the grounds. They could not withstand them. They could not hold their walls as they overtook them and ate them. Uh, and you see these creatures like pouring up out of the ground uh, and coming for you. Uh, can come for uh, Clown and Barden, it looks like, from this one. So we'll make the attack rolls. Um, so this one's for Clown. Uh, 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. And Barden. That's definitely oh. That was almost a one. Oh. Uh, but wasn't. All right. Nope, one too many. So you each take, oh, eight. Eight points of force damage. Lovely. Not bad on the damage, Not although bad. really good on the attack rolls. Uh, Nithvari, you're up as these uh, um, ethereal yeah. undead creatures start to fade. Gross. <laughs> Get out of here, undead things. Uh, she says, uh, gamblers deal in odds and dice. Tieflings deal in lies and fire. If you want to burn someone, you should be hot and true, not the lie of brute force. Fancy. She's I like, like, I want I real like fire. Been, I feel like you've been pulling out some rhymes and stuff. I got to give you an inspiration for this. <laughs> I like all this rhyming <laughs> stuff. Um, some of it's off rhyme, but you know. Yeah. You know my literary background. <laughs> Is this surprising? <laughs> No, uh, I guess not. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have an inspiration die. Oh, okay. Ba -da, ba -da. Now 20. Ooh, 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 snap. Uh, wah, 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 wah. So you can, just as you would normally, you can roll double damage on your dice um, as though this were a crit, because it is crit. So let's do 4d12 plus <coughs> 3. That's so Woo! Good. That's good that was damage. Good. <laughs> oh, uh, so, do you want to tell me how this thing goes down? Because <laughs> that was a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. So, uh, basically, there is an eruption of fire from beneath it that sort of spirals up around it, almost like a sort of fire tornado, and just swirls around it and torches it. <laughs> So you watch this fire turning around at this sort of ethereal fire burning away until there's nothing left and this form um, completely vanishes from the chamber uh, and your fire dies. <laughs> she down. yells, I told you to use real fire. <laughs> <laughs> as as its body vanishes, you see these words that are were, were captured in it at the center slowly start to, to float up. You hear their whispers all together. You can't make them out. It's a cacophony of these silent sounds and they eventually rise up center area and, and congregating. Um, and you find um, sort of almost immediately that these song lyrics you had forgotten, these stories that were missing their words, all of a sudden you remember them as though they had just been on the tip of your tongue and you just couldn't quite get there to them but now they're back and and you find that um you can you can pick them all out of this ether uh and as you you look around the chamber and you watch this happen um a a figure appears um in the center and it is a a very pale man with black hair um and dark black eyes with single white points in the center and he's wearing a robe on the inside of the robe is a, a magnificent pattern of fire. Uh, and he, he looks to all of you and says, I thank you uh, for this work that you have done. You have done yourselves in this world a great service. I offer you any boon that was in, is within my power to grant. Like each of us? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> say it more. <laughs> somber. What would you have? You know, through this journey, I've really learned about what's truly important in life. And I want a lot of money. Please. 
He goes, <laughs> this, this can be done. Yes. <laughs> uh, and he looks, he looks to the rest of you. Uh, Nithbari sort of smiles and she says, on the one hand, and she points to her, her eye socket, she goes, this is a good story. On the other, I just want it back. <laughs> Gold is He's my favorite color. He says, I, I can grant that. And uh, he waves his hand and um, an eye forms in front of you. And, and it sort of <laughs> is an inanimate thing at first. And then as it, it gets more solid and more real, you realize it becomes real. And it just sort of floats into your head and you gain your vision back. Uh, and you somehow realize that this is indeed your eye and that he reformed Ooh. it from where it was taken. This isn't like a replacement eye like mine <laughs> it's your eye it's like you wore you've already worn it in like a good pair of jeans you don't get my have to stories like... back from that right. jerk who ate it in the first place <laughs> right he didn't take them from you he just knew your stories no uh, i know point. but they're my stories you don't want him to have like them. You know them uh he looks to the other two of you what would you have Triniana uh, steps forward and says, I feel a distinct sense of loss, but also relief for something that I think I used to can return that. And he, he waves his hand and there's a moment where this same similar situation where you sort of just remember this story, this thing that happened to you as if you hadn't lost it. It just was something you weren't thinking about, but something triggered this thought in your mind. And all of a sudden uh, it's, it's there again. You have these memories returned to you. She kind of, the weight of it is a lot and she just kind of collapses and you? And she says, thank you. He says, you're welcome. Uh, it looks to you, Barden. Uh, Barden, you can ask for more muscles. Can I ask Ooh. for more muscles? More, more tearaway shirts. <laughs> more tearaway uh, shirts? He, he looks at you and says, I, I believe I could do that. Uh, well, I mean, if that's, if that's in your, I mean, yes, of course. Who wouldn't? Like, you want more muscles? <laughs> of course. Okay. You don't. Uh, he 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 nods and and gestures at you and says it it can be done. Um, and he says I thank you once again. And he waves his his hand and you find yourselves. You're not really waking up, but you're passing through that strange stage where you're almost asleep, and thoughts are muddled and difficult. And you find yourselves all uh, lying in the um, clearing again. And um, Barden, you are now even stronger than you were before. Um, you have increased in strength as though you went through some sort of strange regimen in your dreams that has trained you up to be a stronger person. Um, uh, Tree and Nithvari, you are both whole again. The things that you lost during your time in the dreaming have been returned to you. Uh, and Clown, you find something new on your person. Uh, it is a bag that has a seemingly endless amount of money in it. Oh, no matter every time great. you reach your hand into it, there are, are gold pieces uh, there and waiting for you. Um, the final Damn, piece, no the final piece of this epilogue. Uh, Fifteen years down the road, uh, one day in a tavern clown you are approached by a figure who appears to be yourself but is oh. wearing the horns of a stag uh and it sits down at the table with you everyone else in the tavern uh seems completely unaware that this creature this person is here or there's anything strange about them uh, and they look at you you have a strangely pleasant conversation you realize for a moment that there's not anybody you would like to talk to more than yourself, most likely. Um, and uh, they end by saying, I think it's time we had this out. Um, the rest of you, five minutes later, um, Clown emerges from this tavern that they had a stopover in and goes about the rest of their losses. 
who confronted them on this day many years later. So I am purposely leaving that vague about whether or not you overcame your nemesis. We definitely don't have time for you to fight it out with yourself. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. No. Uh, but that is the end of the adventure. Thank you very much for playing with us. Um, I know we ran, we ran pretty much uh, a little bit over time there as well. Um, but y'all got through a lot of it. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff in that one that just like you can you got to make a choice and you do one thing and you don't do the other. Um, but y'all went a lot of, a lot of places and saw a lot of things and, um, got to interact with all the cool stuff. You, um, overcame those challenges, um, suffered some loss along the way, <laughs> which I think is part of any good, uh, adventure, but, um, y'all did really well. I know the, the storytelling on the spot thing is a little hard, but, um, I thought y'all did a great job with it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I was very impressed in the the oldest game that you mm -hmm. ended on the same thing uh, <laughs> that uh, Dream ends on in the book. Um, I feel like I honestly have a vague memory of that. Um, like I said, I read Sandman, but I read it back in high school, um, yeah. and so like I, I remember the oldest game and i remember like the the mouth eye person i think is in the comments yeah. as well Char charnana zon or something yeah. i can't say his name because it's like a weird demon name but um, yeah. kind of like a pokemon <laughs> yeah it does sort of sound like a pokemon <laughs> um yeah and so for the record what was happening behind the scenes that i wouldn't tell you was on every roll i rolled uh 2d4 and if at any point in time I rolled lower than the total number of times that Kane had answered, then he fails. So he can't fail on the first two um, right. because he'll always roll at least two. Um, so that was to keep it interesting. There was a moment after the play test that I considered bumping it up to three D four and really challenging people. But I was like, I don't know. That's, that's a lot of time. And there's a lot of other stuff in here that soaks up time. So I'm not going to do that, but um you did well. You passed on the first time. They they failed um, uh, once in the in the play test, um, which it is a hard game. It's hard to have an answer to everything. You uh, did let me slide a couple times. I, I did let you slide <laughs> a little bit. Um, at least one of them there, I really thought about calling you on, but we were pretty far into it, and I was like, eh, I'll let you have it this time. But, yeah, great work all around. Good game. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. yeah. It makes Thanks. me want to read Sandman again. <laughs> it, does. It's, it is. So the thing that I was going to have a um, deal essentially that's made that Shakespeare is going to, he's going to have this immortal storytelling ability, but he has to write two plays that are specifically for dream. And a lot of that whole subplot is about how the stories that are told in society are more important than what actually happened. Um, and in Dream's opinion, there's more truth in stories than there is in the real life day-to-day -day events. Um, and I mean, his, one, basically one of his examples is, you know, the stories of like Shakespeare and we think about the histories, the things that are supposedly based on real events. We don't actually know, like nobody remembers what happened to these people truly. I mean historians do and we have it written down somewhere but what people remember about hamlet is shakespeare's hamlet what people remember about king lear is shakespeare's story of king lear um and how much those stories have like sort of dominated what it means to be true and so like dreams mind and, and in gaiman's mind that's that's where the real truth comes from so this this whole thing sort of plays on that like the stories you tell are there's more truth in them than necessarily like um the actions that you may take, which is why the final chamber requires that you tell something you're doing versus actually doing it. Very cool. But I think we are at time, so we will go ahead and call the stream there. Uh, I want to thank everyone who's watching. If you're watching on stream uh, right now, or if you're watching on BOD or on YouTube later, uh, we pre appreciate you checking out um, the role of play. Uh, please join us on 
December 14th, uh, I believe 18th. it is. 18th. 18th. Yep, 18th, 18th. sorry. <laughs> Whatever that Friday is, December 18th, uh, for we are going to be uh, exploring Winnie the Pooh um, via a honey heist game that is led by Kira. Yay! Yes, Draw. we are going to enter the world of Winnie the Pooh and try to steal some honey. <laughs> well, some criminal bears are. <laughs> so, so much more lighthearted than this session. <laughs> it is a very lighthearted, uh, very uh, chaotic game. Uh but I'm excited to introduce it to people because I really enjoy running it. <laughs> yeah. We started with Alice in Wonderland, which was fairly lighthearted. Then we went mm -hmm. right way downhill into bummer territory <laughs> with like the sheep look up and the same. Not sand downhill. <laughs> Well, but down into like sad, darker. sad town. Yeah, like yeah. dark, darker, sad town. Uh, <laughs> went straight, got on the bus to sad town. And now we're going back <laughs> up to, you know, like the hundred acre woods. Mm -hmm. But yeah, join us for that. And um, anything we're forgetting, uh, Alice? Hmm. Oh yeah, there are, uh, she's breaking up a little bit, but there are links in the chat. Uh, yeah, if you want to, um, libraries who are part of the Virginia Tech community, the surrounding Blacksburg, Christiansburg area, who are interested in gaming or literature, um, and being involved in projects like this. We have things that you can do that are sort of behind the scenes. So you don't necessarily have to be on stream if you're sort of camera shy. But yeah, uh, look look there in chat and reach out uh, to us if you're interested. All right, sounds great. Thanks everybody. Bye. 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 Thanks for watching.